every prediction, every reaction, all at once. PlayStation Showcase. Hello and welcome to Triangle Square and a PlayStation Podcast. I'm your host, Brett Beck, and alongside me, uh, away from his home, uh, cold and alone in the warmth of a hotel room. Wait a minute. (laughs) I'm in Texas. I can't be cold and alone. (laughs) That is true. Except for when it's not. Because, like, when it does snow in Texas, as we've known, if if anyone kept a little eye on Texas during the the snowstorm of 21. (laughs) I think so. (laughs) Something around there. Yeah, uh, Texas was like Mad Max in snow, (laughs) you know? Yeah. All bets were off. No one could do anything. (laughs) There's an interesting. Suddenly we were all speaking in Australian accents and dressing like Mel Gibson. (laughs) Yes. Uh, So, yes, Chris is in Texas. So a couple of things are happening. We talked about this last week. Um, For the next few weeks... It seems like it's going to work. We were wanting to make sure that there's no tech reasons as to why it wouldn't. Uh, we will be doing well episodes so like this while Chris is uh, enjoying his short stay in the, the state of Texas. In the um, state of one Pecos Bill. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Pecos Bill. Pecos Bill. Yes. So uh, while he's doing that, hopefully we have minimal issues. Um But it may occasionally bring to late episodes or whatever. But, hey, if you're new to the podcast, first and foremost, welcome. It's going to be a little bit different show than what we usually do today. So this is going to kind of be a half episode and a half episode. Right now, first and foremost, Chris and I are going to be coming together. Mm. We're talking about the PlayStation Showcase, but this is the day before. We're recording this on Tuesday, and because of the release schedule that our show follows, <clears throat> the confirmation of the PlayStation Showcase came out after last week's episode. So we decided for to have a little bit more fun with the idea and with the episode, Chris thought it would be a good idea to get together, kind of throw out some predictions as to what we think might happen uh, as a pre-show kind of idea to actually reacting to the showcase, and then kind of explain why we feel the way we do about some of our predictions, some of them which are very hot takes, some of them which are pretty safe bets, Mm -hmm. uh, and then kind of score ourselves against how we did uh, after we actually watch the showcase, come back tomorrow to record the rest of the episode, stitch these things together. So, with that said, once again, if you're new to uh, to the podcast, we welcome you. We hope you come back for a more traditional episode, uh, but I think we're all just in that excited state for PlayStation Showcase. So, without further ado, Chris... Are you ready to join me in starting off this very odd episode? Yeah. Yeah, I am ready. One thing that we cannot miss, it is a staple of every episode in eternity uh, for us. We have to start with our time-honored tradition. So while Chris is thousands of miles away from his home, (laughs) we're going to start off with him and we're going to check in on what he's been doing, what he's been playing uh, so that we can get an idea of if there's anything we should be, you know, anything we're missing, anything we should go back and crawl back through the backlog, uh, maybe even through the system backlog, the entire, you know, go back <laughs> generations. Uh, so, Chris, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, I am a little saddened to hear that you did not seem to bring your PlayStation Three and Shattered Dimensions. Can you please confirm or deny? Yeah, I didn't do that. I came close. Coward. So, so here's the thing. Um, I'm packing and I go upstairs to my dad and I'm like, dude, this is the best packing job of all time. Now I want you to understand. I brought three weeks of clothes. I brought the mic, brought my laptop, brought a couple towels, a blanket, and I was still able to fit both my PlayStation five, my hard drive, my PS three and like eight games in the suitcase. And I was like, I'm a God. But then my dad goes, yeah, you got to weigh that shit. And I was like, fuck. So I weighed it, and it was like 70 pounds. So I'm like, yeah, okay. So I took the PlayStation 3 out and just brought the PS5. So I've not done a whole lot of flights. Why does weight matter? Is that based on how much you have to pay for the bag? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, exactly. However, well, I, the- I won't say too much. This is for work. Is it not covered? I wasn't going to I wasn't going to go to them and be like, "Yeah, so I used the company card on my first day 
to pay an extra hundred dollars for my flight and my cargo because I brought my PlayStation Three and my PlayStation Five. <laughs> that was I'm, just not a conversation. I mean, I, I would. Why would you even have that? Why would you not just be like, "Hey, my bag was a little heavy because I brought what I thought I would need for a three week, you know, three and a half week stay away from the comforts of my house." I probably should. I probably could have done that. You're probably. Not you know, wrong. it's fine. I'm just disappointed because at the end of this three week endeavor, you will not have. You will not be anywhere closer to a platinum. In a PS3 Classic. No, but I am very close to a Platinum on a PSP Classic. So, big transition. Please, do tell. Do tell. Um, I, I am disappointed about the PS3. However, I knew I was going to set myself up for more disappointment bringing just that than bringing just the PS5. <laughs> To be fair, when I first saw that you were like, um, yeah, the the best combo sounds like a PS3 and Shattered Dimensions, I was like, okay. (laughs) Great game. But three and a half weeks in a state you're unfamiliar with where undoubtedly a couple of nights will just you being like, eh, I don't feel like going out. (laughs) Yeah. Well, I don't have a car, so all nights I don't feel like going out because I don't want to pay out of my own pocket. Um, Fair. Yeah. Fair. So... On my PS5, I was going through the store and I saw Pursuit Force, which I've been talking about in our Discord, which you can join in the link below. In the description below. Classic. Dude, that game fucks. That game is fun. (laughs) It is dumb. It is aggressive. It is. I I don't know if racist is the word I want to go with, (laughs) but a little racist, (laughs) but in a funny way. It's, it's in a funny way. Like you're go, I guess that sounds really bad. Um, <laughs> you're, you're, you're doing these missions and like you're a cop. Oh my God. It's getting worse. As the more I speak, <laughs> please, please continue, Chris. <laughs> you're a cop. Would you like me to hand you a shovel to help? <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> um, and the first case you go after is like the Capelli crime family. They're a, they're a mob. And <laughs> as you're chasing through, there's like one line that I died at where the guy goes, Oh, kill that cop. He's going to make me spill my spaghetti. <laughs> I was like, this is so ridiculous. I want to tell you, I adore that game. Mm-hmm. It's like you said, it's super fun. It's a gaming game. Oh yeah. If there ever was one. Oh yeah. But it has, it has just enough heart and character within that that you still have the most ridiculous story playing out (laughs) Uh, dude psp is really a gold mine for playstation ip and playstation games of gaming games when a lot of people don't really link sony and the idea of gaming games together very often anymore right like that's really moved on elsewhere yeah but ps2 psp ps1 Sony had gamey games, and PSP has got some of their biggest ones, yeah. uh, ones I adore. I mean, yeah. really, there's IP we've not seen in a long time, like uh, the, um, what was it called? Um, Brother, Brotherhood of the Blade or whatever. Oh, what you're talking about, my dude? It is, I can't think of the name of the, the franchise itself. It's... <laughs> Go ahead. Keep keep talking your game. I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, no, it's just a lot of fun. I've been pleasantly surprised. And I'm at the point where uh, if there was a Pursuit Force sequel announced at this showcase, I'd be hyped. Like, extremely. Um, but yeah, no, I just, I think the game is, is really good. I've been having a lot of fun with it. It's, it's not, I, I was having a lot of trouble at first. Um, but now that I've gotten the hang of it, it's actually like very easy. It's more like it's very difficult to get like the top scores. But as far as I'm aware so far for Platinum, you only need to get five A ranks. So and I've done that. So I literally just have to beat the game now and I'll have that Platinum. So, yeah, I will have Platinum something on my trip, just not Sadder Dimensions or Dragon Age Origins, which was also on the list. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would have been a good one, though. It would have been. That would have been enough. That, and that actually that. would have been a, a good example of a game that is long. So it mm-hmm. actually kind of support a good bit of that stay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, crazy enough, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions, Dragon Age 1 and Dragon Age 2 are all three vastly different games. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which sounds weird saying Dragon Age 1 <clears throat> and 2, but the, the reality, if you've never played it, is that Dragon Age 2 is a vastly different game than Dragon Age 1. Um, yeah. That might have been enough to keep your whole stay there. 
to be dead I, honest with you. No, I 100% agree. But there would have been more nights where I'm like, I wish I had my PS5 than nights where I was like, I'm glad I don't have it. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the series I was talking about, by the way, is uh, Untold Legends. There Got was it. a PS3 entry called Dark Kingdom and two PSP ones called, uh, if I remember, it's like Brotherhood of the Blade and the other one was something. Uh, the Warrior, Warrior's Code, yeah. Great games, at least games. to me it's time. Back yeah. when Sony was making Diablo likes, can you imagine? Uh, they might be again. Horizon they Diablo almost, like. <clears throat> <laughs> hmm. Well, you you know the uh I play it. it sounds one of cool. my one of my rarest platinums is the My uh, Mission Racers on Vita. <clears throat> oh, that is one of them. But no, it's I think that um, is the one. I mean, that's definitely my rarest. Uh, but no, the Overlord series from oh, PS3 yeah. came back on PS4 with Fellowship of Evil. And uh, I would have never thought Overlord would have become a Diablo like, and it did. So, I mean, all things are possible through Jesus Christ. <laughs> the Fellowship of Evil is, is possible through Jesus Christ himself. Facts. Um, so, yeah, you, you never know what could happen. But uh, they almost did it. Um, you know, late PS3, early um, early Vita, that Ruin, at one point it was called Lair, and it got renamed to Ruin, or it was called Ruin and got renamed to Lair, something like that, before it got canceled. Ruin, it didn't end up oh, happen. then I don't know. Because I know yeah. Lair is a game. <laughs> oh, you're right. So I'm thinking Ruin was probably what it was referred to as. Uh, either way, you could go and like, it was meant to be like, Diablo like, but you could go and like raid someone else's lair or whatever, which is like their little dungeon where they kept all the treasures and stuff. It was weird, <laughs> uh, but okay, cool. Uh, my list is pretty short. As I'm, I'm so glad you're playing Pursuit Force. That's really the thing that matters most. I'm following in your footsteps and that I haven't played, but I've downloaded. I committed to downloading. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dark Mirror and Logan Shadow, both the yeah. PSP uh, Siphon Filter games, and I think. I'm either going to work on that being 179 and 180 for my platinums, or 199 and 200. Ooh, okay. I will. I'll, I'll figure it out where I want to put it, but I want them to be back to back, and I want one of them to be a milestone game. I could start with one of them right now to be my 175, but the game I have been playing, uh, Tribes of Midgard, again. I've been working on getting the PS4 version of the plat uh, okay. all week, and I'll, I have one trophy, one trophy. Nice. Left. Yeah, so I just have to level nineteen more season levels, and then I'll I'll have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been fun though. They've added a ton of stuff to the game. They've added a summonable mount once you hit the level ten. Which the one complaint I had for the game is that for as big as the overmap was, it felt like even the classes that had speed movement increases weren't fast enough. Like it was kind of, so mm-hmm. having a horse or a mount that you can actually change with, um, you know, buying coins and buying cosmetics for them. So I'm, I'm actually riding on a wolf. It looks sick as hell. Great game. Good time. They've changed saga mode or survival mode, which used to be kind of pointless. You couldn't fight any of the ancient saga bosses that you could in the saga mode, like Jormungandr or Fenrir or whatever. Um, they've completely redone that to where it's like a survival game in the more true sense, like Conan, where you can get, you can build buildings and mm-hmm. build your crafting things instead of it being NPC based. And, um, it's pretty cool. Cause like to fast travel, instead of having to discover your fast travel points out in the map. Now you go out wherever you want and you can build using materials that you have to, uh, gather. You can build pocket, uh, like, teleporters so that you can set a fast travel wherever you want on the very large and it's it's like multi-island maps now so very good having a good time fighting some of the saga bosses i didn't fight originally like um um what is his name the the fire guy from Musfaham, um and then hell in the niflheim realm they've added pretty mm-hmm. good pretty cool time uh and then the only other game i've been playing is as i restarted up soul sacrifice not delta oh. the og soul sacrifice Okay. It's about a 50-hour platinum. Okay. I think I'm going to go for it. You're going to go for it. I like that. Because I already have some of the trophies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't have my original save for whatever Ooh, reason. So you got to so start over. Okay. Yeah, eh, but it's okay. 
I've I've wanted to go to go back to that, so I might join you on that. Since after seeing the schedule, I'm, I get I'm definitely gonna have time to play video games with you. So, yes. <laughs> so if you do that, make sure it's an OG Soul Sacrifice. I've heard Delta's fun, but Delta adds a lot of shit and it makes the platinum like a ninety hour platinum. Oof. And I think Soul Sacrifice is a perfectly fun game on its own Not for ninety <laughs> hours, though. Yeah, so it's like I'm good. I'll just play the one I already know I like instead of yeah. you know. Let me give you one suggestion. Yeah. So I think for your milestone trophies, you should do 175 is Siphon Filter, 180, Siphon Filter 2, 185, oh God. <laughs> Siphon Filter 3, 185, Logan's Shadow, and 190, Dark Mirror. I think that's how you do it. Even if you play I mean, them all, that is how you platinum them. Get to like that the might last be the trophy. right idea too, because they're not super long games. No, they're very easy. Here's the, here's the thing: I've never played Siphon. Well, I, uh, I've played Siphon Filter One. I've never ever beat it that I'm aware of. I'm it, I'm gonna going to be honest. I want to play the Siphon Filter games, but I want to play them in order. And Siphon Filter One is so hard to play that I don't think I'll ever play the Siphon Filter games. I will tell you this much: I don't see any reason as to why you would not just play, or why you could not. Let me t- let me say that: why you could not just play. Dark Mirror and Logan Shadow because they're direct sequels. Like it's a it's a direct sequel that's playing off of that, and they came out like a year apart, um, and they're much better than any of the Siphon Filter story. I played before. That's the problem. The whole Gabe I mean, Logan saga, Brett. Just pretend that it's Final Fantasy and that this is this is <laughs> this is Siphon Filter and then Siphon a uh, Siphon Filter ten and ten two. <laughs> Okay. Well, this is the problem. Except for not as crazy as a shift. <laughs> just yeah. to throw that out there. They're just going to, I know they'll reference one of the other games and then I'll be like, I should have played them all. What the hell this is wrong with Brett? That one guy I shot in a museum in Siphon Filter 1. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. Gosh. The, the MCU has ruined my brain. <laughs> <laughs> the post credit scene for Logan's Shadow. And then it says, Random Hope Museum Guy will return. <laughs> so I'll tell you, originally I wasn't going to do a question, but we have a, because I didn't ask for one. Uh-huh. But I, I feel compelled to give you the opportunity. Okay. This morning, Matthew Green, one of our longtime listeners, longtime patrons, good friend of the show. He came up with he he went and took it upon himself to go to the Facebook group, you know, Triangle Square to PlayStation Podcast, uh, which you can gladly ask to be entered into, and we'll accept you in there. He says, mm-hmm. "I know you haven't asked for questions yet, but I thought I'd put one up while I remember." With the screenwriters striking over pay and for protection from AI t- taking their jobs and pay, could that leak into the gaming industry and we get AI story games, etc.? And Chris being an aspiring writer, what do you think about computers potentially taking the aspects of your life? Now, Chris, I'm going to tell you, mm. we don't have to answer this right now, but if you are down, you can. If you would like to put a little lock on it and, and answer it next <clears> week, <throat> and we're back to more of a standard format. No, I mean, I have an answer. Um, Go for it. The answer is... The, the answer is if I can't write better than an AI, I probably wouldn't get published anyway. <laughs> My answer here of the first question, right, which is could that leak into the gaming industry when we get AI story games? Yes, it will. What Undoubtedly, it will. But here's the thing. Scale and, and how often it happens. Because it is a possibility, someone will do it. Well, I mean, but it will be a game happening. that is... Ubisoft that? has announced that it's, they're doing it. I think Spider-Man, Insomniac, said they were using AI to do some of the voices. This is, it's happening well, already. I would say the difference, though, is he's talking specifically about the writing aspect of a game. And like you talk about, writing is one of those things where there tends to be, for all that people say, there's like a soul to it, right? So I yeah. think that if you look at it from that viewpoint and you're thinking to yourself, like the AI, and one of the things that's, that's very true, I don't want to get into a huge AI spiel, oh. um, <laughs> but I don't know if you, you know the, the game Go, the, the mm-hmm. old white and black. So I don't know if you know that a while back, um, back in 2016, there they had built a GoBot that was able to easily beat the world champion at the time, uh, four, four to zero. Uh, and the, it made the world champion retire because he said that it was a version. It was, it was a, a formidable opponent that couldn't be beat. And 
then researchers went through and looked at how the AI played and just noticed a few flaws. And long story short, one of the guys who ne- who barely even played Go, decided he built a strategy to just win, and he won with a ninety three percent success rate. After originally the bot, the AI bot had had a hundred percent success rate against mm-hmm. humans, and this was an amateur. And what it came down to is that the the people who were looking at it realized that the AI, even though it can win the game, doesn't have an actual understanding of what a group is. And the way Go works is you have to surround a group. So you, they had this setup where they would kind of double stack around. And the computer was so dumb despite knowing. It didn't understand the game. All it knew was what it had been programmed to do. Right. So it didn't have a way of adapting. <clears throat> so the point being there is realistically... AI can give you like scenario, mm-hmm. right? We had that one night where we were playing through saying crazy things of like what we wanted it to do. But if you think first and foremost, we had to prompt. So the spirit of the idea comes from a human to begin with. Mm-hmm. Secondarily, all of the fun of what we were talking about was us taking what the AI was giving to us and expounding on it greatly and, you know, essentially making it fun we just took a skeleton of an idea that we had already prompted for and then we're using our own imagination to fill it out and make it funnier and better uh so i think you'll see ai come into an assistive role where people who are writers may use it for certain aspects um definitely when you need to create thousands of lines of dialogue but then you'll see people kind of do what they do with open worlds right now because some people may not know this most open world games are made with procedural generation of the world and then they go through and do modular generation inside of that so they go well we want this area to have a certain look so we're going to tell it it can still create this but we want it to do so with this tile set of art that we've created so there's a consistent tone and mood and then sometimes we'll go in and hand put something in to give it that extra power but this is just an assistive tool to be able to make a world the size of breath of the wild without it taking 10 years yeah. So if exactly. you if you kind of do those two things together, I think that's where you'll see it. But I think you will also undoubtedly see a Rattalaka style game where someone's just like, uh, I basically just had an AI write a story and then I just put all that into the game. Yeah. And that, like I it'll think, happen. Yeah, for smaller scale stuff, I'm okay. I think the thing with AI, especially in writing, is that I, for me personally, I know that there are going to be people who would be upset. But if the next great American novel was written by Chat GPT, I just think that's cool. Because the, the thing is, like, at a certain point, like, you're com- as a writer and as anything you do in life, you're competing against everyone else. It doesn't it doesn't matter? I had to beat out Oftentimes people for you're this competing job against I got. Yourself. True, yeah. but like in everything, so like. Sure, an AI wrote a book that sold more than mine. Okay, but mine sold more than Brett's book. Like, <laughs> you know, like it, it's. Hey, it, fuck it, you, it's, man. <laughs> hey, listen, it's true. Um, but you, you know what I'm saying? Where like, what's the difference? I think the big issue with AI comes in more like music, where you see stuff where like the best Drake song I've ever heard is by an AI. Like, like it's, you know, like stuff like that. Like that's where it gets scary. Not for me as a writer being like my work. No one's going to, no AI is going to come up with what I have in my head and it's not going to write it better than I, it might write it better than I could, but it won't be my story. Um, but you know, if I, you know, if someone is starting to come out and is using chat GPT to write, write this concept like Stephen King that could be an issue, right, for Stephen King. But it's not an issue for me until I have enough work out there. Someone's like, okay, write a book like Chris Figueroa. And then now I'm like, well, this sucks. Um, But I don't think, I think we're going to get to a point because the music industry will just lose, end up losing so much money if if they let this continue that it's going to get, you won't be allowed to do that. Or people will be able to, you know, I I wouldn't be surprised if in a year or two we see, Drake has copyrighted his voice and that'll sound ridiculous, but then it'll kill AI and then Stephen King will copyright his writing style. And then it'll, it'll get to a point where there's so many copyrights for such ridiculous things that AI is almost ineffective. That's how I think it'll go. 
It'd be curious to see. I want to quickly, the, my final word on it is going back to that example of the GoBot that was looked at. Um, I think people drastically overstate where AI is right now because of the excitement over where it is. Uh, and it is still impressive, whether it be on the writing side or the image generating side and all those different things. Um, but I think that people think of it like the AI that we hear about in sci-fi stories that's so advanced and like, you know, super intelligent AI. And uh, we're, we're not there because what we're really looking at is that you can build an AI that is superhuman at one thing because you built it for that. But most of the time, the people creating them don't understand how the AI even works. And the AI itself doesn't understand how the world or anything works. Uh, the, I guess the problem I'd say is AI doesn't understand the concept of things. And so... To Chris's point, while you can maybe tell an AI to write something like Stephen King, all it's going to try and do is scan for similarities in Stephen King and then try and fit something into it. But it won't have the spark of imagination or the actual conceptual understanding of why it's choosing. Like if Stephen King wanted to be writing like himself, he has the context of himself to know why he's choosing that. And AI doesn't. So I think the quality will quickly make itself apparent. Right, exactly. And then, it's like, Chris, your example, like the a, the best Drake song you've heard is AI. Well, that took someone building an AI that was specifically made to work in, in a... It's someone building an AI that's essentially meant to work to b write a Drake song. Like, it's... You're hyper-focusing these things, and that's where we are with AI. There is not an AI that can just conceptually understand, pull things in, and create. Yeah. All, all AI does is regurgitate something that it doesn't even actually have an understanding of. That's the, yeah, and that's the thing with what I was saying is until we can, if, it, if an AI, like the, my last word on it, right? If an AI does one day write the next great American novel, I would argue that is no longer an AI. That is a person. <laughs> I, I kid you not. Like, there's a jaded part. Of being like, well, an AI could probably figure out all the trash that the the common people like and write something that most people would at least be able to connect with. But I don't really think that's true. I think that deep inside we know that there's a spirit of creation that is the reason that humans have been so interesting for so many years. Mm -hmm. But with that said, uh, we don't want to go on too long on that. Um I think that kind of wraps us up on the intro part of the show. So without further ado, I think it's time for us to quickly get into the weirdness of our predictions. So Chris's setup, as he messaged me, was he was thinking, let's have five predictions, two more predictions that we think are pretty much surefire, and then mm -hmm. three that are pretty hot takes. Correct. Now, I didn't follow that with an exact, as an exact rule of thumb, but mine more or less fits that, that rough structure. <laughs> so I know without a doubt that there is some layer of overlap between us. It's yeah. undoubtedly going to happen. So I think what we should do is ping pong back and forth about our predictions. And then naturally, whenever one of our predictions is the same, we can just kind of talk about why we feel that way and get it out of the way. And then we can see how close or how not close we get with this. Uh, so Chris, are you ready? Yes. I will cede the floor to you. What is your first prediction? Oh, my first prediction. Insomniac opens and closes the show spider-man 2 is the opener they announce a release date it's single player the release date is september 15th mm. wolverine closes the show and is dated for 2024 okay you're not far from mine the obvious 100 percent obvious is we're so close to spider-man Mm -hmm. that there's no way we don't see gameplay here because we've actually not seen gameplay. I think we'll have one of those uninterrupted long-form gameplay things like they did for God of War and eventually did for Spider-Man. Yep. Uh, seems like a safe bet. Wolverine, I'm still really curious on. I think you're right that it might be a 2024 game, but I'm thinking it'll probably, if it is 2024, it'll be another late September, you know, October-ish mm -hmm. game. And so... If we look at what they've done with Spider-Man 2, I'm, I'm questioning myself on whether they would show it again now or if they'd wait until they were ready to show it with gameplay like they're doing with Spider-Man. They did one showing of Spider-Man 2 and then came back, and now they're going to do gameplay. I think it's a gameplay trailer. Dude, that would be wild. 
Mm-hmm. I think it's not impossible. Blow it out. <clears throat> it's not impossible because when you look at God of War's gameplay trailer from E3 um, 2017, right? Yeah. And it released in March or April, if I remember correctly, of 2018. So that was like a eight month period. So showing now, and that'd be the only thing, showing now you'd be a year and a half ahead if it is a late 24 game. Yeah. Like I said, like I said, when they originally announced Wolverine, this is the cadence for Spider-Man was about the same as this. So, all right, we'll all see. Right. What's your number one, my friend? Um, these are just in the order I wrote them, so these are not excitement or when I think they'll happen. But the first prediction I have down is that People Can Fly will come back with an official reveal of the leaked project that we have heard referred to as Gears of Effect. That's uh, on my list. I think there's I think there's too much smoke for there to not be fire. The only way that we don't see this is if it's been internally canceled and somehow PlayStation's pretty good at keeping tight lips, it appears. Mm-hmm. So there is a chance that this has been killed and we just haven't heard of it. But if it's not been killed, I think the fact that we saw alpha gameplay um, <laughs> in a, of course, a leak means that, and how long ago we saw alpha gameplay that was already old by the time it broke the leak. It seems like now is the time to hear that. Okay. I mean, that was on my list, so I agree. It's going to it'll be at the show, and it will be People Can Fly. Here's my question within that. With this game, what do you think Sony's trying to accomplish if, and this is a big if, if this is a PS5 exclusive as was rumored in the leak? What do you think Sony sees the value of this game being? Is it just a chance for them to break free of the third-person action adventure and go more to a true third-person shooter? Do you think that this is live service and it follows that? Or do you think this is more like a traditional third-person shooter story-driven game? Outriders is what comes to mind. I was going to say. um, So my little write-up was... Gears of Effect is shown. It's people can fly. It's live service. It reminds us of Outriders. So we're on the same page. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. What's your next one? <clears throat> this is a big one. If it's not clear by my first prediction, I'm going for decimal points here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let me guess. What you're saying is, is your first prediction, you, you can get half correct. I can get and- <laughs> one, two, three. Four, five, six, oh, seven, clearly, eight. Oh, clearly, because you're legs. saying it'll it'll open. So that's and close. if Insomniac opens, then yeah. regardless of whether it's Spider Man, you get a point. Correct. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely gaming the system. Continue. Well, wait till you hear the next one. <clears throat> I like this prediction though. Either way, uh, Konami and Sony announced two Castlevania projects. They announced that Motion Twin is developing a full. 2D Castlevania game. It is a sequel to Symphony of the Night and it connects Aria of Sorrow with Symphony of the Night officially. They also announced that a brand new 3D Castlevania game is coming. Now, before I say the rest of this, I am seeding my bet to Saul here. Blue Point Games is developing the new Castlevania and it is heavily inspired by their work on Demon's Souls. That's not a crazy prediction. I actually think that, that one's. You know, we've had the Bloodborne two gag running for so long at this point. Yeah, it feels um, bad to give it, it up. I don't. I don't know if people are even know it's a gag because if you <laughs> weren't listening when Saul was here, I don't think that you realize that we kind of make it playful. Yeah. It's kind of like the ha ha, not really. But if it is true, then I told you so. <laughs> yeah, no, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, um, but I think this is a safer version because we always talk about the Bloodborne 2 without being from soft and by extension, most likely not involving Miyazaki being Mm -hmm. just by the nature of that fan base. It's, it's a potentially rough thing because Miyazaki is still making games from software is still making these style games. Castlevania has been dead in the water for so long that, I don't think people are going to care. And the, and also, C- Castlevania has been on enough people's hands that you can't point to one person like you can Miyazaki with the Soulsborne games. So I think you can't be like, ah, oh, Kaiji Inafune. Well, you know, where's he at? Or Inafune, whatever his name is. I don't actually know how you pronounce it. <laughs> Kaiji Inafune. So 
yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you. I think it's a better use of the expertise that you see whenever you look at Demon Souls, which is clearly somewhat inspired as a um, Castlevania like game. Mm. I want you. I, I was very proud of the Aria of Sorrow part of that. I thought that was that was a thousand IQ play there. I mean, just to, for granular <laughs> points. Yes, just for granular yes. points. <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll tell you. Saul would like that one because Saul always talked about Aria of Sorrow. Um, interesting idea for a game. Yeah. I still would kind of like to see if someone would be ballsy enough to try that concept on a console without a touchscreen. Yeah. I don't know. We'd, I, we'd have to see. Maybe Actually, am be... I thinking of the wrong one? Is it Dawn of Sorrow instead of On of Sorrow? Uh, instead of Aria? That's, which one's the DS game? It's Aria. Okay, that's what I thought. Dawn of Sorrow was the... No, no, no. Aria is the Game Boy Advance one. Oh, Dawn of yeah. Sorrow is the is the one Saul talked about all the time, and it was a DS game. Gotcha. It's the one that used a touchscreen on the bottom, and you had to draw the seals to seal away <laughs> the demons, which I think is a sick fucking that's, idea. That's a cool <laughs> that's idea, yeah. That incredibly cool game. idea. Actually, yes. <laughs> I don't think that'll be happening, but okay. What, what's your we're, next one? We're not entirely off of each other's things here. I do think Konami's here. My next, my next two are Konami. So I'm kind of gonna. I'll, I'll throw it as one. I'll, I'll put it together as one. Sure. So Silent Hill Two remake. We're gonna see gameplay of. It's already announced. Ooh, we're gonna okay. see gameplay. It's gonna be like, hey, we're we're ready to show you what the <clears throat> team's been cooking up. It's been long enough since we've seen it. I think it'd be reasonable to get yeah. a first look then at the actual cook. Game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let them cook. All right. Exclusive to PS5, as we know. Yeah. Now we follow up with them. And I don't know if you've seen, there's been reports coming out and even people like Jess Corden, who I think you aptly put in our Discord, he's clearly a fanboy and he clearly wears it on, which is fine. I mean, it is what it is. He's a little annoying sometimes because of it, but his reporting tends to be pretty accurate. Yeah. And he says he can confirm independently that Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake does exist and that it is not exclusive to PS5. It will be coming to Xbox and PC as well. So here's... Here's my little wrinkle in that. So despite reportedly being multi-platform, Sony want the reveal of Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake at their branded show, and they have the marketing tie- for the title at bare minimum. I can see that. I wonder if not exclusive means... Timed exclusive? Timed, yeah. I was wondering that too, but I don't know, because I think it's a fairly reasonable bet to say that Silent Hill 2 Remake is timed exclusive, mm-hmm. but... I think we would. I think that Jazz, if he has this much information, would have the granular information of it being time exclusive. If it were being looked at that way, I could see Sony not necessarily wanting to cough up the money for the for this to be exclusive because Kojima is not tied to it, and yeah, but it's still Metal Solid. So Konami might be <laughs> like, "Well, we think it's worth this," and Sony might be like, "Well, we already have a, a Konami a, a Kojima game, so." We'll just pay for marketing on this instead of timed exclusivity or any exclusivity. And you kind of have your cake and eat it too. Apologies to the audience for what just happened. All right. So what you got next? Or what do you, do you have any pushbacks against that? Do you, do you feel like chances are decent? No, because in my safe bets, I put Metal Gear Solid three remake is shown, but is not exclusive. (laughs) So we're in the No Silent Hill two remake though. Huh? You don't think it's time? I just, I you know, just, blue point man. to or your blue point, point. Yeah. to your point of two Castlevania titles being shown. Uh, I think the way that they clearly came back with Silent Hill, I could see them doing that with Castlevania. Castlevania's mm-hmm. back, baby, and we have five projects to announce. I hope it's not that much, but two well, would be exciting because definitely if you can fit the 3D hunger that people want for Castlevania mm-hmm. in, in a more modern sense, while also being like, but we understand the love for classic Castlevania, so here's new 2D, much cheaper Castlevania for us to throw out there. And we have already had a relationship with this developer. Yeah. And bam. I think that's it I think sense. that's the thing. It it's an even more direct um thing of what I was saying about Blue Point and Bloodborne. It's like they nailed Demon Souls. Motion Twin nailed Return to Castlevania. So give it to them. Yeah. All right. My next well, one. And, and oh, we see that because uh, just a quick aside. Nintendo is ex- they did that exact thing with ironically the last studio uh, to work on Castlevania. Um, yeah, I'm not Steam. sure if you're aware of that, but Mercury Steam made the last 3D Castlevanias and. Uh, 
the first one was pretty beloved. The second one was not. <laughs> um, but I don't know if you remember, they developed the 3DS remake of um, Metroid, Metroid 2. Yeah. And that is what and sold Dread. Nintendo on them making Dread. Yeah. Was because yeah. of how well they handled Samus Returns. So, Agreed. All right, number three. <clears throat> I thought I, I'm surprised I got to this before you. Um, Sony is heavily investing in, in VR. Half Life Alex is coming to the system. They show footage of Resident Evil 4 remakes VR mode. Here's my little wrinkle. They also announce that after the show, a Mercenaries VR mode is coming out. Mm, like a shadow drop. Mm-hmm. It's not bad. Thank you. It's not bad. Thank you. Appreciate that. Shadow dropping is real hot in the industry right now. It is. And mercenaries seems like the easy way to do it. <laughs> so is that the rest of, is that the end of yours? Yeah, that's the whole thing. So I'll tell you where it connects on mine. Um, and that's a little further down for me. Um, so I'll go ahead and give my whole one just as kind of a counter to that. <coughs> uh, Half-Life Alex is the next big third party title for the headset. Mm-hmm. Seems so logical. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I followed that up with gameplay for Firewall Zero Hour. Okay. Uh, followed by <laughs> either a new IP akin to what Blood and Truth was for PSVR 1 or an entry into an existing IP to try and pull like they did with Horizon Call of the Mountain. So maybe a Ratchet and Clank VR title from Insomniac's VR team. Ooh, that would be good. You know what would be a really good VR mode? A Ghost of Tsushima like dueling Dude, mode. <laughs> I really, I seriously debated. I, I spent time thinking like which IP that they have right now is kind of the most broad that can play in a VR space mm -hmm. pretty well, but you don't necessarily have to tie the main characters to it. Uh, I, here's the thing. I don't know if Sony would be bold enough to do anything ghost related without, uh, without Jen, but I don't know that they would use Jen in a VR title. I don't think they want to get that point. If you look well, at what they did with call of the mountain, they just go, World of Horizon. Yeah. What do we do within it? The story is about Aloy, but the story is also about the world and where it's at. And you can look at anybody playing within that world because Aloy is not the only person that can do anything. So while you can look at Ghost and be like, well, okay, you can look at one of the people that was helping Jen throughout Ghost and maybe you can do a side story with them or you could just do a new character and look at... But then it starts being a little against the idea of what Ghost of Tsushima is, which is a well, raid on a small island with one person. Let me, let me clarify my Tsushima comment it would be I'll, I'll, ch I'll change it a little bit it would be ghost of tsushima legends duelers mode or something along those lines and it's you pick a legend and you you fucking you put your your hand down here and you shing, and then you fight with the other person that's that's i mean no wrong it's a mode a, but the, the <clears throat> combat aspect of it i'm feeling yeah Using the rest of the IP, I'm curious about. The reason I landed on Ratchet & Clank is two things. Of course, Insomniac had a VR team before they were bought. It makes mm -hmm. sense to use that VR team. And as far as we know, Insomniac's three-team setup, they broke off and made a very small sub-team for Miles Morales, uh, which did not seem to incorporate their one of their three teams. It was like a break-off team that did something completely different while they kind of worked on Spider-Man 2. So we've seen Spider-Man 2. We know it's coming. We've seen Ratchet and Clank recently, but Ratchet and Clank's done. We've heard about Wolverine. The most obvious thing would be that the Ratchet and Clank team moved to fully develop Wolverine once they got through with... Um, That's it. Yeah, with the most recent um, Ratchet game. So I think that that would make sense to free up their VR team. And the most recent Ratchet and Clank game was pretty popular. And the one thing I was, think I was thinking about, VR right now, PSVR 2, does not have... The game would either need to be Astrobot's next VR game, kind of like what Astrobot Rescue Mission was for VR 1, or it would need to be something that's pretty over overall age friendly to hit that same sphere and they could yeah. do that with ratchet and clank okay i'm gonna add a little bit more to mine just because i'm feeling a little little randy and i want it mm. i want i would i would tell you what i would buy a vr that tomorrow if this was announced and that would be i think they'll announce a snowboarding game of any type they'll announce a snowboarding game they've got kayak vr give me snowboarding vr but the big kahuna as they say, is they're also going to announce that they are working with Tripwire Interactive on Maneater VR. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I am curious as to how that would make you feel sick. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm but I would play I've had it. I've had zero <clears throat> VR sickness out of VR two. I continue. Yeah. Like I I actually played Pavlov with John most recently. Um and good time. New game mode that we played. We've been playing the like zombies and the one that's basically among us, but we did one called um hide if i remember correctly and it's a it is one or two out of the group of eight are monsters and then the rest of them are like a a, a seal team or whatever like a, a fire team is coming out to hunt down these monsters and either the team that is the the people who are hunting down if they kill all the monsters first they win if the monsters kill everybody they win the monsters only have blades on their arms and um a, a shitload of grenades but they can like lunge and stick to the ceiling and it was i was having a blast being the monster <laughs> but i was also having a blast they're like they're like invisible you know that kind of camo in game where like you can just see like a very faint kind of outline and like that little bit of chromatic aberration where it kind of like you see the light like reflect a little weird through uh, their character model because they're see-through that's yeah. the only way you can see them but you can't hear them so you yeah. can set up like trip mines and stuff <clears throat> anyway vr is a good time it is point being is Going towards a game of being in the ocean the entire time sounds like the perfect recipe for fuck you, VR still going to make you sick. <laughs> Most likely. All right, give me your next one, dog. <sighs> Real quick, shout out on uh, Resident Evil 4 VR. I actually, that completely slipped my mind. That is a really good, that actually may be, if, if, Half-Life, if Half-Life Alex isn't happening, maybe Resident Evil 4 is the next, next big third, per, uh, third party one. Yeah, I would think um, so. All right, my next one is hardware based, Ooh. and I was struggling with this. This is a little bit of a hot take. He's going cute. I don't know if they're going to be ballsy enough to talk about hardware during the PlayStation Showcase, but they keep talking about how this is the second phase of PlayStation Five. So mm-hmm. I feel like, regardless of how it's going to land, they're going to take the opportunity to announce PS Five Slim here with a September, like late September, maybe early October. 2023 release date so that it hits they have some it's saturating store shelves before the christmas purchasing season mm. and this is where they'll show off the long this is the long rumor detachable disk drive model and we will get a quick glimpse of the detachable disk drive to show how easy it is to use and attach and i like that whatnot. how do you feel about a september 15th release date i have seen Bundle and with I, spider-man I mean, it makes sense to me. There you go. Um, that's what I'm thinking. <clears throat> I don't know. I know I expect Spider-Man to be September for a, a number of reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, rumors and reports being part of them. Um, but I also think Sony wants to have something to combat the... Starfield. Starfield of it all. Uh, you'd be dumb not to. Now, I think you'd be dumb to do it same day, personally. I don't. I think what you do... I, here, I'll give you this. They're, they're clearly different enough games... But I think Starfield is still a big pool. So why water down at all? I think this is what you do. You either beat Starfield to the punch or Ooh. you let Starf- You do what they used to do with E3. You let Microsoft go first. Everybody's like, man, Microsoft did really well. And then someone goes, yeah, I just haven't seen ours yet. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, well, here's my thought. They let start because when's Starfield coming? Didn't they give a September something release date? As far at least. I think it's that, the 7th or back? the 9th, something around there. Okay. Two weeks. You, okay. you give Starfield two weeks. You, you let it have its little moment in the sun for two weeks. And then after everybody's like this, if everything goes how Xbox wants, everybody's like, this is Xbox's big game. This is their big exclusive. This is the type of quality and whatnot that we've been hoping to see out of Xbox since all these acquisitions. We're finally getting the fruit from the trees. And then so- Sony's like, ha ha. Spider-Man 2. Game of, you know, Spider-Man. G- game, of the, game of the year <laughs> style contender. I'm curious if it would, though, because Spider-Man 1 per- did really well and still didn't get game of the year mentions at all. Um, I don't know. So, all right, what is it, it is. Is it my next? Is it my turn? It is your turn. Go ahead. Okay, Brett. I don't know why I put this in my regular announcements because I think it's very bold-ish. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Rockstar announces Grand Theft Auto 6. No gameplay and no trailer. It comes after an announcement of DLC to GTA Online. All that pops up is a pink Rockstar logo with the numbers 2024. 
I am close to you on that one. Mine was GTA 6 shown with not even an official trailer, but do you remember the GTA 5 trailer they came out with long ago before they officially revealed it? Yeah, just Where it was the, just like Michael. panning across the street and you kind of just see like the spray painted shit in the mm-hmm. alleyways and then you hear the music and then it kind of pans up and you see Grand Theft Auto 5. I yeah. think that's what we're going to get. It's going to set the visual tone <coughs> for the Miami-like setup if mm-hmm. that rumor is true. It's going gonna, it's gonna to pan through. It's going to set that tone. And then it's just going to say GTA 6 with a, I agree with you, 2024 logo. Okay, cool. So I want to tell you two things. A, great spirit box shirt. Just notice that. B, <laughs> yeah, um, I think the greatest possible way they could announce this game is going up on stage and just putting out the alpha footage that leaked. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be I think newsworthy that be at that awesome. point. That would be so awesome. Just be like, we're taking it back. Yeah. <laughs> this is our announcement trailer. We're owning it. Yeah. It's like, it would yeah, be, okay, sure. Honestly, the the top ten, the even elevating that would be it's that, but most of the screen is like a Twitter profile. <laughs> <laughs> to like really nail in on it. Yeah, exactly. Our announcement trailer is the leaked footage from this guy's Twitter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just some random dude. And it's like a screen record of them scrolling <laughs> through Twitter, finding it and just hitting play. <laughs> exactly. I actually think that could work with the humor of the series. I do too. But I, think I don't know just, if they'd be ballsy enough to do it. But it would I be just cool. think Rockstar is too self-serious to make that joke. <laughs> I think so too now. I don't think they used to be. No, I don't think so either. All right, buddy. What's your next one? It's life. Uh, next one, Naughty Dog. This one's pretty obvious, and I'm just going to go ahead and throw that out. This is my obvious one. Uh, Naughty Dog, new factions trailer with a gameplay demonstration due to its live service nature. They don't want to not show gameplay. It's the most important aspect. How did I but forget that factions exist? <laughs> also, they're going to heavily tease the story and probably introduce some of the characters as Naughty Dog want to prove that they can still deliver their storytelling chops with this release since it's not being bundled with the game like last time around. They've already talked about how story is going to be important here. I think they're looking at Destiny 2 and being like Destiny 2 is a multiplayer game that still tells a serious story. And we're going to look at that and kind of do a Naughty Dog take on that. Um, so I think it's going to be equal parts. They're going to talk about story a lot while also showing gameplay a lot. And they're going to really hone in. I don't think, I don't know that they'll ever utter the words live service, but it will be obvious that it is a live service game. Okay. Wrinkle into there that I just thought of. Free to play? You know, we talked about day and date PC. Mm -hmm. Um, I already had my ifs on it. I could see why they would. I could see why they wouldn't. Jim Ryan's recent interview where he said the timeline for getting games to PC that were PlayStation being, you know, three or so years, if not longer, has been resonating well with consumers and that he wants to make sure that by the time they hit PC, that they don't do what happened with The Last of Us uh, Part 1 and have bad performance. Don't give it to Iron Galaxy. They're not good at that. <laughs> I I don't think this is going to be a day and date release uh, anywhere besides PlayStation 5. I could see it. I just because he sur- he doubled down on our job is to sell PlayStation fives and to support the people who have bought PlayStation fives. I mean, so I don't, agree with don't him. expect day and date PC anytime soon. That was his exact I, yeah. words. I mean, I agree with him, but I do feel like live service is the one at time where you can be like, listen, God of War three slash eight is is going to be on PS five for two to three years, but this is a live service game. It's a multiplayer only title. We need to build the audience. You want more people playing online. You know? I, I look, I, and I completely understand where you're coming from, but I think Sony's wanting this to be and hoping for this to be exactly what they already are, where they're the market leader. The majority yeah. of people who play Fortnite play it on PlayStation anyway. True. So I think that they look at that and they go, we may have a smaller audience, but unlike how it's we been have in the previous biggest years of the small like PS3, audiences. we have the biggest of the small audiences. <coughs> exactly. Gotcha. And they look at that and go, we can still support even if we, because you got to think, PlayStation doesn't make money off of Fortnite being on other systems. Well, actually, they kind of do. They do. <laughs> but the point being is that what they're mainly Twice. worried about and why they asked so much about it, it was because of the fact uh, 
that they make the most money when you play it on their system and buy through their storefront. Right. So when Sony's looking at that, they look at that. The player base that matters to them is primarily the PlayStation one. So I think that that's what would be happening here. I don't think Sony would be worried about anything off of it because they're looking at this is the PlayStation fan base. This is where we're going to make money. We don't have to worry about it being percentage based because we own the game. Therefore, we're bringing in all of the you know proceeds. Mm-hmm. I, th- I just think it makes sense. That's fair. Uh, as much as I still agree with you that it being on PC day and date makes sense to build an audience, I just think Sony is the one that needs the audience the audience the least. That's fair. That's a very good point. So, all right, what's next for you? Number five, Sony takes the opportunity on stage to announce an acquisition of some relevance, but it will not be a large publisher a la Square Enix. Yeah. Here's, do you really think the recent thing about freeing up money for acquisitions is going to play into this? Or do you think that that coming out so close to this means that it's not ready for this? What do you think is going on? Well, there's two ways you can look at that, right? They need to free up money because they want to buy more and they've spent a bunch of money. Or they're saving their yeah. money for a big purchase. I don't think that's relevant to to this. If it happens... I don't think if they if they come out tomorrow and they're like, we just bought Ember Labs and Motion Twin, who are now making our Castlevania game. I don't think that affects okay this because I, th- I think you just hinted at it. But weave me a web of what your acquisitions are. Like it doesn't have to be exacts, but what is the purpose of your ac- acquisitions and what's the end goal of your acquisitions? For me, it's what I've been pitching on this show and begging for on this show for years is buy a bunch of small teams who make small but very good games to put them directly into PS Plus. Go to Supergiant. Go to Motion Twin, Moon Studios, Cuphead guys, because I don't know how to say their name. You know, go to, I don't know, Matt Makes Games. Like, these kind of people who make small, digestible, great experiences and be like, you're going to make these games. You're going to put them on PlayStation. They'll go to PC right after that. You know what I mean? Like, I I think if they're going to make acquisitions, I think they need to be small ones. And I think the obvious Square Enix happens, but we would know that by now. So to me, it's just a matter of, that's why I put it, like, it's not a large publisher. Like, it's I, yeah. I hope that they do small teams who are doing things, you know? I would love if five minutes of this was... You know, look at it like, hey, there, here's 50 minutes of our first party and our partners. And Jim Ryan walks out on stage and goes, hey, we're growing Sony. And then they do what Xbox does and put a panel. And it's like IOI Interactive, Motion Twin, you know, all these all these tiny teams that are like these guys have joined the PlayStation family. And then in the center of that little circle of teams is PlayStation Plus Premium. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm with you. I still perfect. think that conceptually, I see the value for that. Definitely, if they're working towards building PlayStation Plus as a pillar mm-hmm. of their um, of their setup, um, in a similar yet clearly different way than what Game Pass is being built for. Right. Um, I, I'm with you, and I even th- my curiosity is I can't remember if they've burnt if they've worked through all the money that they originally announced as having for acquisitions. No, the fact uh, they're talking they about more makes you wonder: <coughs> did, did we do we have receipts that have been announced and already shown that add up to the original amount of acquisition power that they had? I doubt whenever it, that it included was, like Bungie. And it was like Pirates ten, and, I think, and I can't imagine Bungie was three point three six. I think well. If I remember, wasn't that after Bungie? Didn't that report come like this is money for after Bungie? I, think I might so. be wrong. I don't remember. But I'm pretty sure it's after Bungie. So then if you look and say <clears throat> for the – and I don't know. So we're just using it. But if you do have 10, right? You're looking at 10. Uh, we have Haven. I don't know if it was announced how much that they were bought for. Well, We know that they bought Fire Sprite. Actually, Fire Sprite was before Bungie, right? Yes. Or was um, it after? Um, fire, I was thinking of Firewalk. So, yes, Fire Sprite was before Bungie. But Firewalk was after. Correct. Firewalk was like and three then, weeks ago. Yeah, and then that, that mobile game studio. Savage, yeah. I don't think we're anywhere near, near 10 million, so there's, it's, no, there's a there's chance no that you're shot. still right. There's no shot. I don't believe that Savage, Firewalk, and Haven cost more than $500 million altogether. Yeah. I mean, again, and, and even even if you look at that, 
even if you put Bungie in that 10 mil, in case we're wrong on when that came in, we're still not at 10. No, or actually, so. billion. Bungie was billion. Yeah, <laughs> Just to throw that out there. Four. 3.3. Yeah, 3.4. So there's no way. Uh, maybe it was 10 billion they had for acquisition, um, yeah. is what you meant. Yeah, that makes more sense. Um, I don't know why my brain went to million. I'm thinking of the <laughs> PS3 days. I don't even know if that's enough. I'm thinking PS3 days. I mean, Insomniac was like what 200 million? 226, <laughs> I believe. That was late PS4, to be fair. Yeah. Um, all right. So since I've been kind of throwing mine out there, mine totaled to ten, but I've been putting them in. Eventually, we're going to hit a point where you're just going to have to continue because of the way I've been <laughs> saying mine. My bad. Got it. Um, my next one is probably the hottest take I have. Ooh. Okay. And I don't even know if it's true, but I can see a reason for it or a version of it being true. We haven't talked about Nixus. So this is kind of a weird... I can see myself twisting the way I choose to say this down the line. The spirit of it, I think, will be clear, though. So to solve PlayStation 3 backwards compatibility, Nixus will have taken over internally porting PS3 exclusives to PC no as paid-for titles. You just did that. <laughs> really? It's on my list. It's on my oh, list. okay. <laughs> so since the games will work with PC, those titles will be easy port for the x86 architecture of the PS5, therefore adding those games in a download capacity to PS Plus Premium as part of the Classics catalog will suddenly be possible, makes sense, Mm -hmm. and it will get us closer to having some of the beloved PS3 games in a playable fashion, not necessarily in remake, still cheaper to handle, just finding a way to port them over. And Nix's makes the most sense, not only because they're a, a, a... port studio that's what they already were doing if you look at some of the games they're known for porting they were porting games in the ps3 era that were multi-platform games so they have experience taking stuff that was made for ps3 and converting it over to pc the only problem here is it doesn't necessarily solve ps3 backwards compatibility at scale Mm -hmm. but i think it's sony's way of we're working like this is that we're working on the the at scale solution. Here is a temporary solution of where we can celebrate our games by making sure that we have Nixus just port these games in a playable fashion to PS5. In the that's meantime. really good. Mine's a little bit different, but same spirit. At least okay. Let's hear yours. Relevance. So, mine that included that was uh, Sony announces upgrades to its PS Plus tiers. Select PS3 games come to the service natively, including Killzone and Infamous, but. Sony continues to resist showing anything to do with resistance. They, <laughs> they also announce that PS Vita games will be coming to the service. Multiple of the games they during the show, sorry, multiple of the games shown during the show are announced as day one PS Plus premium, but notably none of those announced games are first party games. Lastly, they announce a bunch of PS2 and PS1 classics coming to the service. Mm, interesting. Granular. Okay. That's like 87 points I can get in there. <laughs> yeah. I have very severely thought because I've been playing my Vita so much. And actually, I was thinking as I was playing Soul Sacrifice, like, I cannot believe this game is stuck on the system. It, yeah. It's blown my mind forever. It's a great mm-hmm. game. Um, and it's a really interesting thing. And at a time when Sony didn't always have the Monster Hunter, it seemed like an easy way to be like, yeah, we're going to just move this game. Like, Freedom Wars is the same way. Why would you mm-hmm. make Freedom Wars and just be like, yeah, fuck it? But those are also all games that easily translate. There are a lot of PS Vita games that were exclusives, for sure, and even some of the non-exclusives that are harder to translate Mm -hmm. uh, because they're so tied into the Vita's functionality. Like The reason that Tearaway unfolded on PS4 is essentially a reimagining of Tearaway is because you can't port Tearaway to to ps4 you just fucking can't you don't have yeah. a back touchpad Touchies you don't shit. yeah you, you don't have half of what you need to make that game work out um you don't have a, a camera dedicated on every system to show your face in the sun so you kind of mm-hmm. just have to play around to do something different um but you know while i'm happy to be on this as i've been playing my vita so much i have to really appreciate that even third party and porting studios like Rattalaika have paid attention to the fact that the system has a fucking touchscreen and lets you use it do you know how fucking pissed i get every time i go to play a nintendo made game on a nintendo made system with a fucking touchscreen yep. and i can't use the touchscreen to do anything pokemon oh my scarlet God, dude. pissed me off I, so much cuz i kept I trying can, to touch it and it wouldn't work 
Dude, the fact that you you perfected moving your Pokemon around in the 3DS and DS eras with mm-hmm. the touchscreen, and then you take it away on a system that has a touchscreen. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. That <laughs> shit is it, – it infuriates me. The it's fact bad. that a fucking ride a like a $3 <clears throat> on sale game it will let me navigate its menu with a touchscreen, and I cannot do it with an official Nintendo-made game eats at my soul. It really fucking does. Tell them why you mad, Brett. That's one of those things where, like, I know it's pedantic and it's super picky, but I'm like, why did you put a touchscreen on this son bitch if you don't care? If you're not going to use it, then why'd you waste money? Maybe yeah. the Switch could be two hundred dollars. <laughs> probably <laughs> it probably no, it's probably but, not going to make that big of a dent. But point being, I agree. Why? <laughs> I agree. All right, some bitches because you just <laughs> because you decided was that your boldest one? Because if that was your boldest one, I'm going to go with my boldest one. That was my boldest one. I th- okay. I still think that PS3 backwards compatibility, no matter how you talk about it, is bold. It's just, yeah, it just is. we haven't heard anything that approximates an answer yet. Mm-hmm. So, I do like the yeah, what, Nexus porting games over. That's really smart. And it, more, more games to PC. Nexus yeah. is doing something. People are paying for those games on PC. They probably won't be the, you know, set, the, the infamous $70 collection titles. on fucking PC. Um, yes. Oh. oh. Um, I do want to say though, I was giving, I gave up my bet with Saul twice while I was debating this because my original, one of my original predictions was that Nixus was sporting Bloodborne. Mm, yeah, that's right. I, was, I like that one a lot. Um, so my my bold one, and if you follow me on Twitter at chrisfigs underscore, you've seen this prediction, and I'm very proud of it. I don't know if you've seen it, Brett, but I predicted. Okay, this is this is this is my boldest and most outrageous thing. I have to say today, uh, deep down returns. It is a holy four, shit. <laughs> it is a four player free to play game. It has destiny like mechanics, except the gameplay is swords and magic built like destiny. I'm mentioning destiny a lot because it is a PlayStation exclusive that is being worked on in conjunction with Sony and Bungie it comes out in 2025. Oh, I think monster hunter world clearly showed that if, if Capcom wanted to, they mm-hmm. could easily work towards actually having a games as a service set up. Pragmata is clearly nothing to do with Deep Down. It's nope. so far removed; they don't even share a similar starting point. So, and I, Deep Down, at last time we heard, is not dead. This is bold, but this is not in the realm of impossibility. I, no. I, I respect it. I Thank respect you. it because if you watch that trailer, in the end, there are four players. <laughs> For nights, you don't know if they're playing. And but. when did they last renew? I'm gonna look real quick. Capcom renew deep down. I think you're right. I was gonna say 2018 <laughs> or 2019. Capcom renewed the trademark in 2020, June oh. 19th. It's a coming. I'm just saying, three years. That's a development cycle, my dude. Um. Yeah, they had previously renewed it in 2018. I'm not kidding. I would shit my pants if Deep Down showed up like this at the store at the show, dude. Even even if it's not what you think it is, if it just shows up, it's wild. It is wild, dude. It, it, this is not a prediction, mm. but if it were a prediction, this would be my boldest one. If Rockstar comes out with fucking Agent, dude. the world would <laughs> the world would be set on fire. It's like, what is going on? Agent, are we in the rapture? <laughs> it sounds sounds still sounds so cool too. A CIA it, it, like spy. The crazy thing is, no one's done. The really Rockstar was like, "Hey, here's a cool concept." Right. We apparently didn't make it, <laughs> and no one was like, "Yeah, we snapped that shit up. That sounds cool as fuck." Right. Well, I mean, they <laughs> yeah, did make the. Saboteur. I'm a little surprised at that. <clears throat> the saboteur is a cool game. I give them give got to give them people's credit. Um. I don't know if you if you saw my clearly Back to the Future inspired. Actually, I know you did my Back to the Future inspired Spider Man Two plot. But as I was typing it, I was like, "This actually sounds fucking incredible," it and I'm totally good. cool with this. So I was just throwing that out there. And the whole time I was thinking is, you get thrown to Spider Noir time, so it's 1920s New York. So the whole game is presented in black and white. But they do that like Sin City style noir, where it's like anytime there's blood or anything, which Dread. would require this game to suddenly go mature. I am aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not yeah. the blood; it's the gray spit that comes out of everybody, like in Mortal yeah. Kombat on, on this. Yeah, yeah. Ugh. 
green. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't it green or it was, was it gray? gray? Oh, it, it was, was gray. No, it was gray. It was gray. Yeah. Oh, man. Stupid. Uh, yeah. Okay. My last one, because I've reached. Oh, my God. Uh, I have so many more. I, Good Lord. I know, because we structured <laughs> ours differently. Yeah. I've been doing mine line by line. Maybe I actually should have done them as individuals. It doesn't matter, though. It's fine. Uh, so my, my last one that I have, Fire Sprite. Twisted Metal is revealed as a PS Plus premium slash extra day and date exclusive. Uh, or day and date um, title, not exclusive. You can still buy it if you're not on PS Plus. With an actual teaser of the Peacock series that goes through a trailer rather than the Anthony Mackie. I think the reason the Anthony Mackie one was a teaser and not an actual trailer was because this was a, they knew this was coming and Sony wanted to do it here. I'd be a little upset if there was a TV show trailer at the showcase. I, Exactly like I talked about with hardware, I debated. But I think when you can do it as a coupling of like, hey, clearly we've been showing interest in Twisted Metal. We know people want it. We're doing that with the TV show. Here's the game. Let's see them both. I think it would be cool if it was like a intersplice trailer. Like it's Anthony Mackie driving and then it becomes the game and then it comes out and it's Sweet Tooth and it's, it, you know what I mean? Like kind of going in that way. That way you see some of the show, but you also see the game. So it doesn't make you think, oh, cool. Five minutes of Anthony Mackie, the least charismatic man in Hollywood. <laughs> he's out of line, but he's right though. Okay. <laughs> the point, my point, I, I don't necessarily agree or disagree. I, I'm kind of indifferent on him. I do remember that when they announced that he was going to be in Altered Carbon Season 2, I just was like, I, my yeah, drive to watch that show just Absolutely plummeted. Fell. Um, but um, the only problem I see there is that it's a, it, the marketing, it'd be impossible to take away. And if this is not what you're intending, it'd be impossible to say that the game is not like a tie-in to the show. And I don't know if Sony's going that bold yet. I don't know. I think that... It's uh, just confusing messaging. You know what I mean? Like, I get what you're saying, and I could even see it being a cool trailer, but the messaging for people who may not be as in the know is going to be like, so the game is a tie-in to the show, and I've got to play the game and watch the show to keep up? I guarantee you that would... Marketing would just be like, we don't even want to run the chance of it, so just don't do it that way. That's fair. Uh Oh. All right. But all right, I, so you clearly have so much more. Let, I'm gonna let you run like, through yours. And I have just, like f- four more, I think. Not to mention the backups I've got. <laughs> but yeah, you, yeah, you went, you went way deeper. I had like twelve total. Uh, <laughs> so all go right, ahead. Well, my next one. <clears throat> Bungie finally announces a quote unquote new IP. They announce Marathon, a first person hero based shooter, is coming to consoles and PC. It has early access on PS5. I would be super surprised to, see, to hear them refer to Marathon as new IP. I just don't think it would happen that way. Well, I put it in quotes for a reason. <laughs> well, yeah, but Bungie keeps talking about working on an actual new IP. So do you think that that's still happening behind the scenes outside of Marathon? Because yeah. there's also been reports about them returning to Marathon. They have multiple. I think they have, the, it's, I've heard they have multiple games in there. And I think just looking at what Marathon was, it would be a very easy way to make a live service shooter. But... I I was gonna go Oni originally, so until I realized Take Two owned that shit. So, <laughs> dude, no joke. I would love to see Oni brought back without all. I don't know if you've ever looked into the development stuff mm-hmm. that went on with Oni. Um, there, don't wrong. Plenty of problems from Bungie <laughs> within their mm-hmm. their own thing. Plenty of problems, but also plenty of problems with Take Two being like, hey, this has got to happen like now, and m- constantly moving the target of where it's supposed to hit and where it's not supposed to hit. Um, I would love that game to not be – that game could easily be reimagined, and it's an incredible foundation. Yeah, it just doesn't – what I was reading about it doesn't seem like a Bungie game. Not a, a modern Bungie game. It's a third-person No, it doesn't. It doesn't. And it came, it, it came from someone who I don't even think is within Bungie anymore because, you know, it was a Bungie satellite studio. Yeah. I wonder if they do that or if Sony wants to punch below the belt a little bit and Bungie announces like a single-player, multiplayer – IP that is a PlayStation game. It's not a PlayStation exclusive, but it's a game for PlayStation. So interesting. Uh, I'll see your next ones. All right. My next one. This one's a little bold, but I like it. Spider-Man slash Wolverine appears in a trailer for one of the two games. The trailer makes it clear that they are in the same universe, but that they will not be in each other's game. Okay. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. I've been curious if they're going to be bold enough to put them in the, even in the same universe. They already said they're in the same universe. Oh, did I, I, I see. I was thinking like, I feel yeah. like I remember hearing something, but I couldn't. I, I was like, I don't know for sure. Yeah. I think the way I'm envisioning it is like spider, like Logan sitting somewhere, Spider-Man coming down and being like, Hey, I need your help. I'm a little busy with college classes or something. And then Wolverine goes off and that's the game. That's how I expect it to go. That's what I would think. I think even if you got that as an Easter egg, it would be something simple where like in a cut scene, Spider-Man's like swinging over a coffee shop and you see like newspapers fly forward and then the camera stays down for a second and you see a newspaper hits one in the face and then you kind of see him go, Whoa, and as he goes to grab it, you see his claws come out. And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> that. And even it's just better, like a passing, you even know? better, Spider-Man's swinging and Wolverine just cuts the fucking cuts the line. The spider web. That would right. be that. The problem with that that's too like that's too Deadpooly. Like that, it's it too aware. So I don't know. Go ahead. I, I lean towards the meeting for coffee and sending him on a mission. All right. Um, Ghost of Tsushima PC, The Last of Us PS5 and PC, Ratchet and Clank PC announced. Yeah, that was. I almost put that in my Nexus thing because I think it makes mm-hmm. sense. But I was just kind of like, I'm gonna let it go. I wouldn't be surprised if a Going back to messaging, what we just talked about a second ago, my question here is, does Sony, after having Jim Ryan in the interviews talking about focusing on PlayStation people first, at the PlayStation Showcase, is that the place where you go, hey, while we're talking about the future of PS5, here's these games going to PC? Or do you do that at another venue? I I don't know. I'm curious. They've done it at other showcases. They haven't done it at a showcase that I was aware of. They've done it at PS um, State no, of Place. Maybe you're right. I thought it was a. I thought like God of War was announced at a showcase. I don't know. I think if anything, you might be right, but I didn't think it was. I think it. I think it depends on what you think about factions specifically for The Last of Us Two. Because what I could see is here is The Last of Us Two plus factions PS5 version. The Last of Us Two plus factions PC version. That depends on whether, what they do with factions. So I guess we'll find yeah. out. All right. My backups, I'll, I'll run through them quick. Uh, Resident Evil 8 is announced. Um, DS2 is named in another trailer. You mean shown. Resident Evil 9? That's the one. Yep. Resident Evil 9 is announced. Uh, DS2 is shown, uh, is named, and another trailer is shown. And there is some actor of note who is not in the A list playing a character and shown off in the trailer. Okay. Cool. Okay. That's it. Yeah, G- Ghost Two and Death Stranding Two are the big. I I don't think of them as surefires, but I could also see both of them there. I don't think I've seen people say Ghost that Ghost Two isn't going to be there, yeah. and I can kind of see that because that game was twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. So we're three years out, and even though the part of me that wants games to you know only take three to four years, if not even shorter than that, clear, it seems like at this point it's a kind of a foregone conclusion that the average sequel for a PlayStation game is five years if some between four to six years yeah I would think so so because God of War was four years and Horizon was five years for a sequel cool so yeah that's all, all my right. predictions well, well Chris say. as of course we will always do we'll use timestamps uh, to where people who don't care about the predictions can just go through and look at our reactions mm-hmm. but we'll see how well we did tomorrow uh, so yeah we'll be back we'll see you guys tomorrow technically we'll be seeing you all at once it's not going to change but we'll be back tomorrow and we'll see how well we did <laughs> <laughs> alright Chris see you tomorrow man later on well hello it is roughly 24 hours almost Almost actually exactly 24 hours. Yeah, I think you might be right um, there. Since we, since we met last, Chris, to record uh, our predictions for those who wanted to kind of hear our wild thoughts, uh, first thing I could tell you is that we were, by and large, incredibly wrong. But it'll be <laughs> fun to talk about the times in which we were right. Uh, so... We're back. We've watched the PlayStation Showcase. Uh, we had to just keep earmuffs on all day while we were at work, waiting, yeah. hopefully, hoping that none of the information spread out and ruined the surprise for us. But now that we've watched it, we're going to come together, we're going to kind of talk about the things we liked about it, talk about the event as a whole and kind of how we feel about the first presence of a showcase since this long absence uh, that's happened since you know the, the launch of PlayStation more or less. Uh, And of course, we're going to talk about some of the games that are within it. Now, I think it's fair to say that by nature of what a showcase is and how a showcase of that stature uh, is designed, 
there are going to be things that Chris or I just don't naturally have anything of value to put into because it just doesn't speak to our sensibilities as gamers or it didn't click with us uh, visually as what we saw. Uh, so we will talk about the things that we kind of have interest in, talk about things even when they just seemed, I, I guess interest is a great word, right? Because interest doesn't have to imply positivity or negativity and interest can just be an interest. Um, so with that out of the way, Chris, I think it is time that we talk about the event. I think the best way to kind of start this is let's just gauge how we feel about the event as a whole, considering that this is the comeback. So Chris, yes, first hi. showcase in two years, maybe a little bit longer at this point. We've been running on the fumes of spray paint <laughs> cans and state of plays, you know? Yeah. So um, how'd you feel? How did it tickle the fancy that you needed it to tickle? I don't know how to feel about it because I think I've seen the sentiment in our discord after watching it and even online that it wasn't a very good show, but I don't think there was any game I wasn't interested in yet to some various degrees. Like there were sure. a couple games I skipped. Like I didn't care about cat quest two and there was like some puzzle games where I'm like, I'm never going to play this. Um, but a lot of the times I skipped, it was like, I, I thought Final Fantasy was coming and I shut it off. I moved on, you know, um, Night in the Woods was the same thing where I'm like, I don't need to see this right now, but I'm going to play Night in the Woods. Um, so it's hard because I don't think it was a showcase worth waiting this long, but I think it was a good showcase. <laughs> Okay, can we take a step back and where did Night in the Woods come into play here? Didn't they show that? No. No. Well, they showed a game that looked like it, so I skipped because I didn't want to see anything about it. Okay. Because <laughs> that's where I was kind of like, huh? Um, I'm not sure where you are. So I'll say the differences between how we approach this is I just watched it. This this is the level where I'll watch something like this, even if it's for something I don't want to see. Sony, whenever it's something like this, it's like, okay, I'm not constantly looking up all this stuff because I don't want to have a lot of Final Fantasy 16 ruined for me either. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to see things and I want to get that experience. Um, so I didn't skip anything. Um, and I think I mostly agree with you. I don't think there was anything that was just immediately like, I'm so disinterested <laughs> that I'll look away. Um even though I think I got pretty close with Street Fighter Six because just nothing about that speaks to me. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never been a big Street Fighter fan anyway, and I think the way Street Fighter Six is changing things up doesn't necessarily... As someone who's not a huge fan outside looking in, it seems like a massive change that I'm a little surprised is mostly being met well, which I'm glad it is. I don't want a game to be met poorly. Right. And it's the uh, first new Street Fighter in a long time. I hope that everyone who's a Street Fighter fan is a fan of it. But it just wasn't really speaking to me. Uh, so all right, any other thoughts on just the, the showcase as more of an entity that you no, want to kind of get I, off? I just think if this is the quality of showcase, I, they need to do more than one uh, every three years. Because, again, this wasn't bad. Um, but I don't know. I want to hear how you felt about it, and then I'll give my little theory. That I've talked I, about. much like you, I, I think that there was like a lot of good and a lot of weak within this that I was mm -hmm. like, as I was watching it as a, as an event and as a, a fan. And, you know, we hear this line from, from Jim Ryan about how this is about delivering things for PlayStation five users. And I think at the end of the day, they are fulfilling their obligation. They are, mm -hmm. but with that, there, there were some caveats. So, Initially, the good, I think that they were really smart to not stay to play it and just set a flow where, for the most part, it was just trailer, 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 trailer. They didn't try and do the state of play thing where they have uh, you know a voice kind of recap what you just saw and talk about it for a second and say, next, we're going to check in on the Talos Principle 2, which, by the way... Boy, I, I knew about it, I, I, saw. I knew what it was, and mm -hmm. I was like, "There's no fucking way this is the Talos Principle too." And then when I saw the little gate flickering, was the thing was that I was like, "Holy, it is fucking Talos Principle too!" Yeah. And then they said it, and I was like, oh, <clears throat> "Hell yes!" But we'll, we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that stuff in a minute. So that being said, I think that the overall pacing, I think that they chose the right flow and cadence to. Mm -hmm 
not weigh you down with annoying talking or anything like that. The one time that they broke from it to show hardware, which was not the hardware I thought we were going to hear about. Um, interestingly enough. And I don't even, I'm not even sure that why it was included at the end of the day, because it, it was basically just what you talked about with rockstar and your predictions, where it was just Sony being like, uh, yeah, we know this thing's already been leaked to hell, so uh, it exists, but that, mm-hmm. but you don't get any more information. That's yeah. like, that's what it basically was. So, um, with that said, I think it had a good flow. I think it was trying to move between bigger games and smaller games. There was a lot more indie presence here than I would have anticipated, uh, but a lot of really big stuff shown. I just think at the end of it all, I wouldn't call it bad. I think it was fine. And like you said, I would never call this, I would never look at this and go, this isn't quality. But it does feel like, okay, if this is what we're going to start doing, there is zero reason that you can make me excited for this if this is going to be every two years this. Yeah, right. It's just it's just not enough. Uh, and so I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with you. I think at the end of the day, it becomes a, a necessity that this has to be a weak showcase. But it is a little disappointing for this to be Jim Ryan's supposed the unveiling of the next stage of PlayStation 5. They showed a lot of great games, and I can't really say anything negative about that. But the one big takeaway I have from PlayStation as a whole is we are no closer to knowing what what the hell is going on at any Sony studios besides Haven. (laughs) Yeah. Well, okay, so then here's the question for you, right? And this has been something that I've been thinking about since it ended. And I can't tell if this is like in my head cope or if this is like an actual thing. But doesn't it feel like the amount of third-party games that clearly Sony has marketing on, right? Mm -hmm. The amount of games coming to Xbox, where Xbox has a snarky tweet of, look at all these, what a great group of games, and it's also coming to Xbox. Um, The lack of first-party, the lack of a Spider-Man date, the lack of Twisted Metal. In my head, I feel like there's got to be another one of these coming, right? That's where my that's where okay that's where me as a fan who wants mm. to, an understanding of what is coming from PlayStation to support their own system yes um, I agree we got a lot of dates for a lot of games and I am appreciative of that and some of those actually impact us uh, and, mm-hmm. and a bet we have going on but more importantly. I was kind of in that feeling where I'm looking at this and I think the best thing I can say to kind of summarize this is whether or not it's fair uh, and whether or not it even speaks for the majority of the fan base on either side, strictly from a online Twitter spheres, you know, the internet bubble for gaming where people who actually are into games enough that they want to go talk about them day in and day out on things like Twitter. If Xbox had done this exact showcase They'd have been crucified for it, I feel like. I don't think that's true. I think that's a bad take. Now, I've seen it. You're not the only one who said that. Really? But now, crucified if, may be a little hyperbole, but I think there's there's different things going on, though. I think part of that comes from the fact that we didn't see anything from, really, anything from first party. And so if you, if you flip this and start looking at, okay, well, if Xbox did a showcase and they didn't show anything from first party, when the whole talk of the entirety since 2018 has been, they finally bought all the studios, the games are going to come, you just got to be patient. And here we are five years later, and we really haven't gotten the juice from the squeeze yet. So I think in the context of where Xbox is, they, this would have been hit far more negatively for the lack of first party presence. Now, Sony has had much more first-party presence and pretty high-quality first-party presence, as Jim Ryan was easy to state at the beginning. There's been a a number of big, great games that were highly received. So I think that... I'm not saying it's wrong that PlayStation is not getting crucified for it. I'm just saying that in context of where each system and ecosystem are at and what the fans, at least on the online, want and want to see, I don't think the Xbox would have been given as much of a benefit of a doubt as what Sony's getting here. Sony's See, earned that benefit of the doubt. But what's your take on that? I just, I don't agree because <clears throat> if I would actually maybe call me a fanboy, I don't care. I think Sony is getting hit harder than Xbox would have showing this exact showcase. So you're because, saying you think expectations are even higher? Yes. 
Okay. Because S- Spider Man looks fucking incredible, and if you <laughs> and if um, <laughs> June whatever when they do that Starfield and Xbox showcase, and if Xbox shows one game that looks. 15 percent as good as spider-man it they'll be hailed as kings for figuring it out that's the thing like yes there was not enough first party there was not enough exclusives there was not enough stuff that's not coming to other places but it ends with the one of the coolest trailers i've ever watched i was saving that for a little bit but now that we're here and the spider-man can is opened um, I, I want to talk more about it in depth, mm-hmm. but I agree with you that one of my biggest takeaways is that I was kind of like, okay, like this was okay, but this wasn't enough for me and I really wanted more. And then when uh, Spider-Man came up, uh, I was like, somehow that made all of it worth it. <laughs> it, yeah. doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And that was but, one of the, <clears throat> well, one of the really nice things watching that. And it, it, this is a very like in our Discord thing, but I, the second Miles started swinging, I was like, "Yeah, I was one hundred percent right. Fuck a new map. Fuck a new map." <laughs> they spent five years on swinging, hey, and I'm. We in. will talk about that in a second. I do want to dig into that because I think there's a lot of things shown that a con- conversations we've recently been having. I, well, I, I think you'd be surprised where I'm at on that right now. But okay. more importantly. Um, <laughs> The, the only suit? other the only other comment that I want to say specifically about the event, yes, is I feel like this is very similar to what we saw from Xbox in 2021, or I mm-hmm. think it was 2021 if I recall, uh, where they got a lot of crap for one of the Xbox showcases being almost entirely CGI with very little gameplay show, mm-hmm. and clearly it's not that strong here, but. Even my wife, who was sitting on the couch playing her Switch as I was watching this and was occasionally looking up, was like, without me, I didn't say anything. I was just watching, kind of taking it in, soaking it in. She goes, there's a lot of trailers where they're just showing you something and you have no clue what the game is. And then they just go to the next thing. And I'm like, exactly. <laughs> there's nothing to go off here. You want me to be excited? That Neva game or Neva or whatever that... Yeah. Uh, it looks incredible. Like artistically, that looks great. Greece is a great game. Mm-hmm. I have no fucking clue what that game is. You, I couldn't tell you right now. I don't fucking know. The only reason I even am mildly excited for it is because that was a well done trailer that showed me nothing about what the game is, and I quite liked Greece. So I, it's floating off <laughs> of the fact that I liked the previous game, and yeah. that can be said for a bunch of games in here. Mm-hmm. And so I go back to the thing of contextually, Microsoft has been hit hard for some of these things. So I, I still just think whether it's rightfully so or earned or anything, I would love to get to peek into an alternate dimension where this exact showcase minus Sony's first party things, which is pretty easy to do because there's fucking none. <laughs> there's <laughs> that, two, three. Yeah, but, but if, if they had... Uh, if all of these games were just shown under Xbox's showcase and and the PlayStation this didn't happen and today was Xbox and PlayStation was at the beginning of June, I would be super curious to see the reaction. I'm not saying I'm 100% right. I'm just saying that because of how the industry is between the two, I think it would surprise most people to see the reaction that it yeah. actually did get. You're probably not wrong. I just think I think it <laughs> People who play in the PlayStation ecosystem are used to games like Spider-Man. And mm-hmm. a game on Xbox's stage that comes close to Spider-Man would be a finally moment and not a, yeah, okay, we get it. It's Spider-Man, right? The fact that I think a lot of people are taking it, taking for granted just how impeccable that game looks because it's a Sony stage, right? And because it hasn't been a, a conference in two years and because we don't know very much it's a lot of like hey i, I that's where I, why i think that they uh sony's getting dinged a little more cuz spider-man carried like it carried so hard and it didn't need to and we still got cool shit like mgs3 and mgs classics coming in in you know the fall we got stuff that in in a lot of showcases would have been like if spider-man had already come out you jesus Oh, sorry. You end. You end on MGS three, right? That's an ending. 
And that happens in the middle of Sony's showcase. So, yeah, I'll give you the context around. It's all interesting. But taking a step back from looking at it from more of an industry thing, I think really I am impressed because at the end of the day, this is a shitload of really cool looking games, most Mm -hmm. of which I have much like you said, most of which I have a strong enough interest that I could see myself playing all of them given the right conditions. Mm-hmm. Uh, separate of Street Fighter Six, probably, and that honestly says a lot. It's a yeah. good time to just be a gamer. There's a lot of great games shown here, and if anything, I think it really shows the importance of indie continuing to rise in quality and to rise in terms of quantity to where it can meet the. It is meeting the demand of where AAA games are expanding out so long that you don't see them for six years, and indie games can continually come up and be like, "Hey, we're going to show you something," and. Indie is a strong word because I know some of these I'm looking at as indie are probably not a great way to look at that way. But I think that there's a indie and even double A, I think, are just really showing their purpose in the market throughout this and in a great way. I don't mean that with any pejorative sense. I'm a 100%. huge double A fan um, and I'm a huge I'm a huge indie game fan. So I think that this, it's an easy way to interweave that. The only real critique I'd have is I would have liked to get a better idea. I think it's insane that we still have nothing on factions and they've been talking about it since the last of us came since before the last of us two came out. Mm -hmm. I can't believe they didn't date (laughs) Spider-Man. I actually was not surprised at all, but let's get into the nitty gritty of it. I think we'll kind of keep a little bit to the structure. So I want to save Spider-Man for last because it's clearly the big talking point of the show, but there is something that the game did or that the show did really importantly Mm. that a goes against what you thought was going to (laughs) happen (laughs) <laughs> and, and B, uh, finally gives us some kind of look into what is actually going on. So we open with Haven and a game that I'm still not sure if it's called Fair Game or Fair Games and the dollar sign was... meant to be an S. And I think Fair Games is an incredibly worse name than Fair Game, interestingly enough. <laughs> uh but now that we're finally kind of getting to see what it is that Haven's making, uh, how are you feeling about, are, are you feeling as, as bullish as you think Sony were to go in and buy it? Or do you think we've still not been able to see enough to make that obvious? I don't think we've seen enough. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think we've seen enough. That's the real answer. That's where I'm at. I came away from that as mid as I can get. Yeah, it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look great. It doesn't look like anything. It's a movie, you know. Exactly. Yeah, which is a huge problem. But it's clear. Like, it's. It is, I will say for the trailer, it does tell you what the game is. You're. It's a heist game. You're going to be doing yes. it with friends. It's an online mm-hmm. game. Like we know yes, all, everything we that. need to know about it. It is a trailer that at least attempts to show what it's going to be about <laughs> in a more right. cinematic fashion. Um, Following up with that, though, I was really surprised because I was looking at the Helldivers 2 start. And I didn't play Helldivers 1, even though I've heard great things. So Mm -hmm. I didn't have that initial like, oh, this is Helldivers 2. um, Until, of course, he said, become a Helldiver. And I at like the first time around, I was like, okay, clearly Helldivers 2. But I was like, is this a Starship Troopers game? Because it looks (laughs) it looks so much in the spirit of Starship Troopers that I got to give them applause. It was really well done, even for a game I've never really, you know, I don't have any love for the first one. It did a lot to pull me in and just interest me watching it. I thought it was a well done, compelling trailer that mixed CG and the voiceover with also a showing compelling looking gameplay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I thought, I thought it was interesting, but you basically said everything. Next game we move on to is a game that I've been saying I think looks surprisingly good. And if I remember correctly, I put it onto my Metacritic. I you could did be not wrong. Yet. Oh, I did not yet. Are Wait, you because I, I didn't know if it was coming. <clears throat> it is coming this year. Mm. Okay, if I haven't, I'm going to put it on there. Because where I was going with that is I already thought this game looked incredible. But I was a little weary of it being... I don't know if you remember... PS4, there's a game called Lictum Battle Mage. And yes. it was very close to this visually. It, all it's trying to do is like, well, what if we were able to make a game entirely out of the visual stylings of Skyrim's magic, which is basically just the visual stylings of Bioshock? <laughs> 
True. And l- licked them, or licked them, whatever that how it's actually pronounced. Did what not happened? hit. It did not hit. It did not work. It, it had huge performance issues. It had game design problems. It didn't work. And that kind of realm of first person magic shooter has kind of been untampered since then in all in all honesty so this coming back and looking a lot better in the nature of it i think this trailer was incredible it sold me more on the idea of it and i also see this as being a good 12 to 15 hour game that will Mm -hmm. get in and get out and i i feel like gaming really needs that right now yeah i thought it looked like a lot of fun i was really glad i was seeing gameplay i was like yeah i'd buy that game (laughs) yeah so I continue to be impressed by EA originals in, in general. You know, that's what they've done with Haze Light and uh, both It Takes Two, which I've yet to play, but it looks incredible and clearly has done well for them award-wise. Uh, and then, of course, um, A Way Out was a fantastic game. Yeah, I do love A Way Out. The next one up, though, and I, this is... I think this show started really strong because I feel like I have something to say about almost every one of the beginning games, and I don't know if you're in that same boat. Uh, Ghost Runner 1, did you play it? No, I did not. I played it as uh, a PS Now uh, test because I knew it was a fast-paced game with like Twitch response stuff, so I streamed it to my PS5 just to see how PS Now did, and I, it did well. I was able to beat the first couple of levels. It's an incredibly challenging but fun game and i thought this just looked even it looked like more of that and this is kind of in that independent triple a or independent double a realm of where it's kind of blurring the line between the two uh and clearly it's coming from 505 so it is uh, not an independent game but still i thought it looked quite cool yeah it's a different cyberpunk is so big in style right now that the fact that it's still able to do it in a way that feels distinct like as soon as they showed it, I knew what it was. Yeah, exactly. I did too. I was like, "Oh, Ghost Runner two, cool." Yeah. And then it showed the name, and I was like, "I was right. That was Ghost Runner two. Neat." <laughs> Slick logo too. Great logo. Slick logo. Now we get to a game that I think looks incredible. I don't necessarily know that it'll get talked about in the sense of being incredible, but I think it'll be a game that enough people buy and will be like, yeah, this was a good, solid game. Phantom Blade Zero looks incredibly inspired by a lot of things, arguably incredibly derivative of a lot of things, but it also looked really cool. Yeah, it did look really cool. And if you told me it was a sequel to Sekiro or Neo, I would believe you. So, If you told me it was a sequel to a number, if you told me it was a... A spinoff of Stellar Blade, I'd believe it. Dude, if you told me it was a Platinum Games developed Skyrim's uh, offshoot, I would believe you. <laughs> That's kind of the weird thing about it is that as I was watching it, I was like, the game is almost nondescript, and yet it's borrowing a lot of ideology from other games that I enjoy. Mm-hmm. And so as long as it's not done poorly and it looks like it performs quite well, mm-hmm. then I was like, yeah, I could see this because it kind of had like set piece moments where it was like tying into like Uncharted looking stuff for a second. And I was like, that's kind of cool. That's an interesting take on that type of game to focus on a set piece. And then it got very fast paced and looked like a platinum game style game, kind of like you mentioned. Yeah, um, it, did. it had that Neo feel as sometimes too. Uh, and of course, the way the story was going, it felt like I could see the Sekiro in of it all. Like if you were telling me you're following up with a new person in the world of Sekiro who has 66 days to live, it was it was interesting. But it's almost hard to remark on it because everything about it that was interesting I've seen in another game. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a weird one for that exact reason. Yeah, um, sort of the sea. So this is coming from the the one that got away from PlayStation. I always wonder, do you think Sony tried to buy that game company? Sure, probably. I asked myself because think about it. Flow, Flower, and Journey are all award-winning games that got Sony so much love and care in the PS3 era when they needed it. They needed good PR. They needed to be like, yeah, we're just making artsy games for the players because we're a game system. And then the fact that they didn't end up with them has always surprised me. But the Pathless was incredible. I didn't play Abzu, but it always looked cool, and I thought about going back and playing it. And this kind of just looks like more of that. Like, it 
had the obvious journey inspiration. Like, so at the very beginning, when you see the sand dunes rolling through the arched, uh, you know, aqueduct looking things, I was like, okay, I see this. Um, but it looked good. Yeah, I was into it. I When it first started, I was like, is this Journey 2? Really? I thought it for a second. <clears throat> yeah. So I'll play this. I like I like their games. On the Journey 2 thing, for the split second before it became obvious it wasn't Journey 2, I was like, are you really scraping the bottom of that IP barrel? Because I think that most people would agree that Journey is a good example of a game that you don't need to make a follow-up to. Like exactly. <laughs> That was exactly where I was at. Where I was like, "Really?" Mm. Which we get into weird things. A lot of games that I didn't think would ever see sequels got sequels announced in the showcase, and they were all second games <laughs> in it. Um, so we've already talked about Neva. I've already talked about Talos Principle too. I think it looks incredible. I love the first game. It looks to be fulfilling that promise more. It's gonna. I, I don't know if you played the Talos Principle, but it's a very portal-like puzzle, uh, mm-hmm. puzzler, and the way that it tells its story. There is an interesting story within it. There's great puzzle design. This just looks like more of that. I think that looks incredible. Uh, but I think the next game of note, and I'd be curious to see if you agree, okay. and not necessarily for a positive reason. What do you think of Foam Stars? <laughs> that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <clears throat> now, this is interesting because we spent a little bit of this beginning of the show talking about how a CG trailer can't show you the game. And in the same showcase, they showed you a CG trailer and then gameplay of the same game. And it was jarring how yeah. bad it looked in comparison. It looked s- terrible. Terrible. <sighs> terrible. I I was watching this and my wife even was like, this looks like that squid game. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, clearly. Clearly is what's going on. Splatten. Uh, yeah, Splatten. <laughs> Splatoon. <laughs> um, and it made me wonder... And the little bit that I've seen, I don't think that it's been met with the reception in, again, to highlight this, the internet sphere that does not represent the majority of gamers. We always have to make sure we keep our context of that in mind. But I think what is safe to say is that Splatoon spoke not only to the casual people that don't care about talking about games online all day, it also got a great reception with the core gamers who go online and talk about games all day. There's no way for us to tell whether this game will Splatoon with the general play base, uh, player base who maybe doesn't have a Nintendo but kind of like the concept. The game could do really well with everyday players. I It does not currently appear that it's gotten the same level of fanfare in the internet sphere for gaming. And I was curious if it would or wouldn't. I don't want to speak in, you know, as an absolute yet, because I haven't gotten to see, you know, we, we, I literally turned the thing off, got on discord for like 10 minutes while I made sure that you were good and done. And that's all I've seen on it. Mm-hmm. And a little bit of Twitter. So a lot of square here. Yeah. Square seemed like an odd choice for this, publisher-wise. Yeah, it was a weird one. And, and they showed that trailer, and <laughs> that's the crazy part. And what sucks about CG trailers is the whole beginning, I was in. I was like, this looks cool as hell. This is sick. It's definitely exclusive because it's a Square Enix game. So like, that's cool. There's at least one. And like, I'm getting hyped up. And then it starts doing the gameplay. And I'm like, this is an abomination. Why would they put this here? I would have I would have rather it was five minutes shorter and they just never showed the game. I honestly think that might have been the right move, but I'll tell you from my own personal standpoint, it's funny because I went from being from it being Square Enix and then seeing this trailer of like a crazy looking cape and like walking dramatically with that low camera angle that's pointed up where you're only seeing like very specific parts of the cut and then he picks up this giant gun i was like oh shit what is this is this like a serious jrpg that's gonna be exclusive or is forespoken not their only attempt at another triple a like 
JRPG to stop now. Final Fantasy. I was like, <laughs> this could be cool, right? This could be cool. We know it can't be coming from their Western studios because they don't have one anymore. So I was like, what is this? And then it was that. And I was like, Splatoon did not speak to me in the slightest. And I tried and didn't really enjoy it, which is fine. I'm glad that other people don't like it. But this was weird. I want to see more out of Square Enix. And this is so weird because we didn't get a chance to talk about it last week. We we meant to, and then the episode went a little long. We had to cut off. Um, but Square is talking about how they're refocusing and wanting to have it to where they go toward showing... It's the best way to say this. They're talking about bigger games and how they want to focus on quality and pull it in. And I don't think that this speaks to that promise at all. Yeah, I don't either. Hmm. It's just well, Chris. Such an go, go ahead, game. go ahead. I got a my camera's doing some weird flickering stuff on one thing. It's not on the other. So I'm gonna look at it real quick and come back. But I feel fairly confident that me and you might come to a similar spot. What's the next game that you feel like caught your attention? Uh, tear down. Yeah, Teardown was the next one for me. I thought that was, I liked the uh, aesthetic of it. And then I was into the, like, when it first started playing and showing gameplay, I was like, huh, is this a home invasion simulator game? (laughs) (laughs) And I'm not entirely sure that it's not a home invasion simulator, but um, the trailer, I thought the trailer looked really cool. It looked like something I can't wait to download and play. So it kind of got me because of the, Hyper realistic Minecraft vibe, mm-hmm. like it looked like Minecraft geometry set with like hyper realistic lighting and texture work. So I was like, yeah. "This is visually very weird." Um, but yeah, I think the game looked pretty interesting. I don't know if it's one of those like I'd for sure get, but I could see myself like occasionally watching videos of people doing stuff within it and being like, that looks cool. Like I'll probably never play it, but people yeah. are doing cool stuff within it. Right. Um, I'm, I'm a little surprised because I know it was the next game. Did you have no interest at all in the Plucky Squire? Because I thought that that actually looked incredibly whimsical. And again, clearly derivative of some stuff because there's a lot of like, uh, there's a lot of, taking the idea behind Link Between Worlds where you can go mm-hmm. as a flat you know, 2D cartoon and then pop out in 3D. But I thought it took it to a really interesting idea. I thought as soon as it started and you could see the storybook, I was like, it's an interesting visual framing that you can... They're yeah. showing the edge of a real world. I thought it was... And neat. as soon as they had him pop up, I was like, this is... It looks novel. It may not yeah. be amazing, but I was like, this is a... This feels more important than some games we saw in terms of impact at least on visual design yeah i would agree um i don't know i i thought it was interesting but it's not really my type of game i did that and talus principle i was like oh brett's gonna like this one <laughs> i could tell <laughs> i could tell so I'm glad i was right about that at least i think that we we now make our way to what i'm going to call the weirdest and most drawn out and st- i'm gonna go ahead and say stupid way to announce Metagross Solid 3 remake I have ever seen. Uh huh. I was looking at this and I was like, what the fuck is this? Dude, I thought it was Dino Crisis. It looked like dinosaurs <laughs> fighting. I didn't know what it was. For a split second, I thought, is Michael on sales wild coming back in just a really weird way? <laughs> or is this a follow up to that? Um, do you remember the the game that the guy who was originally, if I'm not mistaken, he was the original mind behind Assassin's Creed and Prince of Persia? Um, yeah. The, the, the Sands himself. of Time trilogy. Um, no, Mike, Mikhail Ansel is, um, is the guy who was Rayman. Okay. Yeah, the other guy I'm thinking of, I can't think of his name right now, but he had this game not too long ago. And I don't know if you remember, it was uh, a game where you where you played as a, a monkey and you evolved over time. And the name was something simple like evolution. It may not have been exactly that. Uh, but that was basically the premise of it. It was It's called Ancestors, the Humankind Odyssey. Mm-hmm. I don't know that game. 
Oh, I okay. do know that game. Yeah. Yes, I do. Because I always think about getting it. So it's why the monkey you? game. <laughs> yeah, it's the monkey game. Because <laughs> it seems complicated. So, yeah, it, it was like a really interesting principle. Like I was like, I could see it being interesting, but I also like when I watch gameplay, I'm like, I'm not really driven to this in any strong way. But it could be one of those games that gets you. I thought that was a really weird one. Um, then we get into this thing where I feel like we're seeing a lot of games. Well, we shouldn't skip Master Collection. Volume one. So clearly Konami's dipping into that old well, finding ways to make money, selling you Metal Gear Solid Snake Eater, and then selling it to you later as a remake. Uh, One thing I thought to note, all we got was that trailer, that CGI Mm -hmm. trailer. Shit else. No word of who's making it. No gameplay. Nothing to really make you excited other than here's a CG rendering of a character you're already very familiar with. And the only reason I find that to be noteworthy is that we have been hearing rumors of a Metal Gear Solid remake and specifically Metal Gear Solid 3 being the Metal Gear Solid that is being remade for roughly three years. And yet this is what we got. Yeah. How? I don't know. Like hype. Cool. Super cool. Also, how is this what we got though? That'd be like Blue Point not making anything (laughs) <laughs> since like Shadow of the Colossus PS3 collection and then people being like, but Blue Point's remaking Demon Souls. And then whenever the PS5 was announced, all they showed was a CGI trailer of Demon Souls with nothing else. And they were like, yeah, it's coming. It's We know it's been in the works for a long time. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it was just, it was weird. It's It's another trailer that leads me to there has to be more somewhere, whether this is at Jeff Keeley's thing or this is at another showcase or it's at an Xbox stage on June, June, who knows? But, and that might be the answer here. We get a teaser here in a month or roughly a few weeks. We get gameplay. Yeah, uh, it's possible, but we didn't Uh, even get a date. Like it was, they're not even trying to say like when it's coming, but go ahead. What were you thinking? Let me gut check you on something. This game, this game comes out as 2025. Uh, we're all chilling. Does it say a Hideo Kojima game on it? No. Yeah, that's probably right. Which is crazy because that's a Hideo Kojima game. But I think it's the wrong move. I think if Konami wanted to win with, without having to go the full route of trying to be like, yeah, we're going to bring Kojima back because Kojima probably doesn't want to go back. But I think you can save a lot of face. And you can get a lot of good PR by being like, we know we're remaking this game and maybe even small parts of it are going to be reimagined to make sure that they're good for modern audiences and, you know, modern tech and what we can do on these consoles. But at the end of the the day, this is a game remade that was the love child (laughs) of, of Hideo Kojima and his brain. Yeah. I don't know. I'd be interested. What I think would be funny and I think would actually be a really nice homage is if the game goes a the the current creative director game and it does it every time it would have been Hideo Kojima. It's the guy who's in charge of remaking the game. I think that would be a nice little homage and like kind of like this isn't Hideo Kojima's version, but we're keeping that spirit. I, I think what would end up happening though is that the rapid like the rabid fan base would be like this is disrespectful. Maybe, but and I just think that when Konami's just now on their return to console gaming and stuff, I don't think that their PR plan is to do anything that might piss anyone off. I think well, they're trying to be innocuous, come back and just be like, "Yeah, you love Metal Gear Solid Three. Here it is again, just even <laughs> prettier and more modern." Yeah, and you but, love Silent Hill too. Here it is again, just prettier and more modern. But if they, Th- if that's they, what they're trying to do. That's their modus operandi <clears throat> right now. Before yeah. they start doing more ballsy things. I just think the problem is that unless they do leave the imprint of Hideo Kojima in there, they're going to have the same issues. So why not have a funny little, hey, it's this guy's game now, you know? At least at that point, you could see it as them trying to pay tribute to the him in that way. Like, But... I think you could also do the thing where you play off of it, where you have it at the very beginning start and say, um, what's the team that is rumored to be making this and has been for Virtuous. a long time? 
Yeah. So you can say a virtuous game and then have it to be where like it glitches and you see it like, and then it comes and says a Hideo Kojima game instead. Yeah. You That'd know, be cool. There's a lot of cool ways I can go. I can see it. ways around it. <clears throat> can we talk about the fact that we're clearly getting Metal Gear Solid 4 and this is called because it's called Volume 1? <laughs> so you got to imagine four Peace Walker Ground Zeroes is on there. Rising Revengeance. That, my thing was what next? Like Peace Walker makes sense because even though Peace Walker was a PSP game and a lot of people tried writing it off for that, that is a fucking mainline, very important, full-fledged Metacritic Solid game. It's a, it, it's a great game. But the question is, is what do you do afterwards? Like, so you have Metacritic Solid. And, and if... I want to look at it real quick because if I remember right, was it Metacritic Solid 1 or was it Metacritic Solid... Um, what what was in it? It was um, one, two. I know I saw two and three. Three. My yeah. real question here is, what was it, it? This may be the first time we've seen. It is Metal Gear Solid One. I've always <laughs> been curious if they'll ever do the thing where it's Metal Gear Solid One, but it's all it's it's the um, uh, Twin Snakes GameCube uh, version that Hideo yeah. Kojima did. That was like a full-on 3D, higher-quality remake. Um, I guess not. Yeah, it doesn't seem like they're going that way, sadly. So, yeah, I guess the next game would have to be 4. 4 and Peace Walker, baby. Give me a more. Man, if 4... That would end 4's PS... Like that's 4 is one of the few games that has remained PlayStation exclusive. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Wild. The next game, and it's actually the next game on the list, but I think it's something that's important to talk about because I feel like we're seeing a little bit too much of this. That Towers of a Gazba game just felt like I see... It was hitting in the worst way of I feel like I'm seeing too many things that it's already like. Like there's clear like Avatar inspiration from like the floating monsters that he's like parasailing to. Yeah. But it also looked a lot like someone looked at the Chia reveal trailer and was like, yeah, we're just going to do that. But with mm-hmm. like a darker tone and a darker mood. Yeah. I wasn't interested in this game at all. <sighs> Didn't hit me. Didn't hit me. 16 looks incredible. If you don't want to talk too much about it, cause you skipped it. I think that's I fair. Know. 16 looks incredible. There's no reason to think otherwise. Um, I hope you enjoy it whenever it does come out and you play it. I will. June. Ideally. June. Ideally. Will this be the first final fantasy game you've beaten? If, if you I beat, beat it. it, yes. Well, the upside is, is you won't have to pay for it because I'm getting it. So, I'm kinda... <laughs> good to know. All right, Chris, this All one's right, important Brett. for a number. The next two games are important for both of us. Uh huh. Yes, they are. Alan Wake Two. <laughs> yes. First and foremost, you're a big Alan Wake fan. You got me on it to play the remaster. I thought the remaster was quite good. There are there are problems I have with it, but I think a lot of that comes from it being an old game that I was playing much later when my own personal expectations have changed. But I still think it's a great game. What did you think yep. of this? I mean, kind of tapping oh, in, looks- showing <sighs> showing clear times where you're not playing as Alan. Pretty Dude, interestingly, I was I was so hyped. I was watching this. I'm like, this looks incredible. It, it was. I got halfway through the trailer and almost turned it off because I didn't want to see any more about it. <laughs> it. They got me in that fast. Did you stick it through? I made it through the whole trailer. Yeah. I want to tell you what I was most hyped for. Mm. My boy Sam Lake coming back as a character in his likeness. <laughs> he may not yep. be Max Payne anymore, but my boy Sam Lake is back in the game. Yeah. Both figuratively and, <laughs> and literally. And literally. So I'm I'm very happy. That was quite cool. I thought that was really cool seeing him step out of the car. I was like I om- that that has to be for like fanfare because Yeah, hundred percent. Fans loved him being the face of Max Payne all those years ago. Um so I thought that was pretty cool. I think the game looks really cool. I do wish we had gotten to see a little bit more of it, but I think that a game like Max Payne can withstand being a little more cryptic because of the type of game that it is. Because of the cryptic nature. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. It is coming out this year. Yeah, it is. October 12th. We kept talking about whether it would or whether or not. It is not a zero unless something crazy happens and it gets delayed out. But it being in October, even if it got delayed, I would imagine we'd be seeing like a November at the latest. Uh, So you're looking quite clear. And that's one more great looking game that is hitting this calendar. Mm -hmm. 
cannot cannot wait. Conversely, Assassin's Creed Mirage, yeah. a game in my list that was also iffy on whether or not it was coming out this year for some people, but I stay I remain steadfast that it would <laughs> is coming out this year. Yep. And while I am not the Assassin's Creed fan that this is probably most geared towards, this looks like a clear, obvious, we understand that there are people that didn't like the new take on Assassin's Creed. There's room to do both. I thought that in trying to show it being an Assassin's Creed game, it looked incredibly well at the end. A classic Assassin's Creed style game. Mm -hmm. Where are you on that? You a big... Were you a big AC Classic fan, or did you really become a fan with like Origins and, and Odyssey, or did no, you kind of like both? I for don't like reasons? Origins and Odyssey. I don't think really? those games I, I are good. I didn't think you did, but I, I was unsure. I okay. I should say I did beat Odyssey, and it spent like forty hours with it. But there's just too much, and I think the boat combat and the boat stuff in the Assassin's Creed franchise is god awful. Like it sucks, <laughs> and I hate engaging with it, and that's why I was really pleasantly surprised to see that this game looks like Assassin's Creed Two, like that era of Assassin's Creed, and it made me very excited. I'd go so far as to say it looks like an Assassin's Creed One remake, and there, there was a I rumor going around agree. for a while that they that they were doing that, and I think it was just this. I yeah. think someone saw a screenshot and was like, "Bro, that's Assassin's Creed One." Mm-hmm. Dude, the ki- I don't. I hope this is in the game. I don't know, but that kill of him wrapping the rope and then j- jumping off the thing with off. the guy, I Here's, was like, "Dude, I'm in." <laughs> we reached the crux of my problem with the original Assassin's Creed game. So, <clears throat> yeah, that looks awesome, right? It does. The problem I have with it is that that's the exact kind of kill in the classic Assassin's Creed games that they would do to where you don't control shit. You walk up to somebody, and then the game's like, don't worry, bro. We're going to kill him in a cutscene. We'll do all the work for you. Mm-hmm. And that is the exact thing that I want to do. I want to see games as often as possible not take control away from me for something cool to happen. Instead, be like, hey, this is still happening. And it's still scripted, but you're going to feel like you're doing it because you're going to be running forward. You're going to have to jump. You're going to have to hit a button to tie the rope around his neck. I don't care what it is. Find a way to make it interactive, and I'm mm-hmm. fucking in. I think that my biggest thing that I hope this game gets away from that I think the first couple of Assassin's Creed games eventually kind of just pushed me out of them was that feeling of being an assassin, but then every time I was supposed to kill someone who was important and move the plot forward, the game would kill them for me. I only got to kill people who didn't matter, and it pissed me off because I'm like, this fucking guy has got information that I need, and yet when I get five feet from him, the game just starts a cutscene, and I stab him in the back without doing shit, and then he lays on the ground and tells me exposition. I think you're misremembering Assassin's Creed a little bit. I really do because first I of all, know. possible. Second of all, I I know without a doubt. I remember that scene in particular well. It is fairly early in the first game, and it was the first thing that threw me out of the first game. Like, the, bro, the, people love the this. first game is not good. There is a reason that people go. It's going to be the Assassin's Creed to Assassin's Creed Two jump. Okay, <laughs> the first game is. I played Assassin's Creed Two for about two hours and got incredibly bored. But there is a savior here. Terrible take. There's a savior here. I played Brotherhood. And Brotherhood was fantastic. And Brotherhood was fantastic. It still occasionally did exactly what I'm talking about, of taking the control away from me during very important parts. But other games that I really like also still do that. I won't hold it completely against it. I would just love to see this go Hitman style. That's all Mm -hmm. I'm saying. Hitman it to where all the important stuff still happens. You still see the things that need to happen. But I get to kill everyone that matters. I don't need that to be something that happens in a cutscene. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I'm going to play AC2 and Brotherhood again. Um, mm-hmm. But I really think that, because from what I remember, Brotherhood you, mo- I, I, you I'll sneak say Brotherhood up mostly and you, fixed it. you stab and then the cutscene starts. So you get to the point of actually killing and then it does the like computer fade out and then it fades back in and he's like, oh, rescue shot and pache and blah, 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 blah. And it kills the guy, <laughs> you know. If I'm not mistaken... Aren't oh actually Assassin's Creed One is the only one you can't easily play, is it? Yeah, it's only on PS3. That is actually kind of wild. Now I can see why people good. were saying that maybe that needs that game needs it. Well, yeah, but if you want to be a, a a huge AC fan, it is a little crazy that you can play 
the entire Ezio trilogy and everything else, and you can't just play the fucking game that started it all. That's yeah. a little wild. <coughs> I think, um, I think it does need a remake, or at least a Look, port. But definitely, you're probably remake. right in that it's a mix. But what I'll say is that the feeling that I did not have as much as control as I wanted is definitely there, and it's a big reason I like I like Dishonored One so much because Dishonored One was exactly what I thought I wanted Assassin's Creed to be when people were talking to me about the premise of like, okay, I'm an assassin, I can choose which way I want to go about doing things. That was another thing is most of the time there was only one way to go about killing someone, which kind of got boring because it's like, yeah, maybe even if you do got to sneak up and snap, stab them. There's not more things I can do within that. And it's, I get that you try to frame certain parts of the game because you need certain things to happen so that you can have certain things unfold in these cutscenes. And you can't have a cutscene where I'm talking to a guy who's slowly bleeding out if I blow his head off. I understand it. <laughs> but the point being is, I would rather have the control to kill him how I please. And kind of just go around. And I would even love it to do what Dishonored did and be like, if, if you choose to kill somebody in a crazy-ass way, you may miss out on story. And so if you want to be more in the know and you want to learn more, it pays to be stealthier and kill people in slower ways. But if you want to be chaotic, you can be. And you'll just miss certain parts of the story because you <laughs> won't get the context you need. I think that would be, for me, that'd be a compelling game. What I may do instead, Chris, instead of even worrying about playing old Assassin's Creed games, I may just play this one and try and go into it and be like, this is my refresh, restart into Assassin's Creed. <laughs> and I'm see how I feel. I'm glad you got onto the good ones. What's next, Brett? Tell me what's next. I feel like there was a big hunk of games that uh, a few times in this, um, I felt like we're reaching a point where Japanese games that are trying to look like anime just all look the same. Yep. That's one takeaway. I want to say at one point I knew it was grand blue fantasy relink, but at the same time it kind of looked exactly like what was that other game that they showed through this? Was it, it wasn't conquered. Was it, it was um, tower of no. fantasy looked exactly the same to the point. Where I was like, is there, are they showing grand blue again, which <laughs> looks exactly like the way that tales of Arise look, which looks exactly like the way that Scarlet Nexus look like it looks good. And I do like that. They found a way to nicely render anime style looking characters in 3d, but I'm kind of tired of the fact that every game is like, yeah, that's how we're going to do it. Like, yeah, it was funny because we're Genshin um, and it looks exactly like Genshin. Those two games, right? So, in terms of Grand Blue, I skipped most of it because I didn't care. Because I was like, I don't care about this. I don't like Star Ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and you're not wrong. The last Star Ocean game I played looks about like that. Yeah. And the most recent Star Ocean game I think looks even more like that. And exactly. I didn't even play it yet. So, yeah, we're running into a point where I don't feel like there's enough visual difference between Japanese games on at least the character models to where it, it kind of right. makes me be like, it's more interesting when you shake it up occasionally. But that's not speaking on the quality of the game. It just makes wanting to watch the game and sit there a little more boring. Mm -hmm. Interesting thing, though. What do you think about Ultros? That was the little, that was the one that had like the, the crazy looking planet. It looked to me, and I was wanting to see if it showed who actually developed it. Um, oh, it looked cool. I remember, it I'm looked like, it, it looked like a Thunder Lotus game. Yeah. Because it, it kind of has that hand drawn art feel to it. But I don't know. It's oh, apparently Weirdvo. The, t it's the team behind Hotline Miami. Oh, shit. Really? Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that. I thought that looked pretty cool. It looked like if you tried to mix, and, and I would even say that they kind of know this, but the logo they chose to do, it looks like if you tried mixing like Returnal with like the uh, Eldritch game that was also uh, one that came from Thunder Lotus. I can't think of the name of it right now. Um, I don't know why I can't think of the name of that game. Um, do, 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 Sundered. Fantastic game. Really great game. I thought it looked cool though. Yeah, That's one of those like a cool. lot of lot of great indie games throughout this. A lot of great indie games. Yeah. The that's again why I maintain that had this been a year one of the last three years we've gotten a showcase, or hell, if this had been a state of play, it would have been ten out of ten. 
this would have been a killer state of play. Holy shit. Right. I, exactly. And I know that sounds weird because it feels like, why should it be different? But there is just a different expectation because otherwise, why would they go? The expectation is different from Sony. Why would they call it a mm-hmm. showcase instead of a state of play if they didn't feel the expectation was also supposed to be different? Uh, we move into an interesting thing. Were you a Dragon's Dogma fan? I was, yes. I do like Dragon's Dogma. I have a group of people who have spent their time around me, uh, like like Ryan's old sweet Gran Turismo Jones, who love that game and adore that game, and I've never played it. I've right. watched people play it. I've never touched it. It's uh, my game. buddy, my buddy Jonathan, loved that <clears> game, <throat> adored it when it came out originally. Um, but that's kind of where we are. I don't have much to say on it other than that it clearly looks like more Dragon's Dogma, and it does look cool. I just I didn't play the first one, so it's it's not pulling me in that way, but it's nice to see. Yeah, I don't have much to say. Um, I like the first Dragon's Dogma, and it looks like more Dragon's Dogma, like you said. <laughs> so, Chris, I want to kind of bundle this as one thing. Okay. We got five it. PSVR 2 games. Yes. The real question I want to say here is we can talk about any of the individual games within that. Did the, any of these five games shown do anything to further your interest in actually picking up a VR? So, yes. Okay. I am buying a VR specifically for Synapse. That game looks fucking awesome. Synapse looks incredible. It's the one game that was shown that I was like, there you go. This Because <sighs> Resident Evil 4. Can't wait. Looks great. The upside to it is that they've kind of talked about it, and they've been saying it'll have like a VR mode, but they didn't talk about it in the same way about as they did Resident Evil 8, where it's playable fully in VR. So I kept waiting to see if it will be Resident Evil 4 Remake fully playable in VR, but I'm happy to say with what they showed, that's looks what it like looks like. Fully playable, yeah. Um, and speaking- Chris, you... You played my Oculus VR while you were here, my Resident Evil one. Doesn't it just look like they took basically that and were like, yeah, we're just going to smack the new coat of paint on that? Yeah. I remember saying, I wonder if Facebook got the old one and <laughs> Sony got the new one. <laughs> you said that exactly to my face. So, yeah. yeah. You are correct. I will. Uh, have it looks to, quite uh, good. I will have to give myself about a eighth of a point because eighth I was right about point. them showing remakes vr mode i was wrong about half-life alex mercenaries man eater and a snowboarding game <laughs> beat saber obvious though i know people wanted it so i'm glad it's on there cool crossfire sierra squad actually looks fine but it's more looks of fun. what we've seen in the past arizona sunshine 2 is just a sequel to a uh, and i get it a sequel to a beloved vr title okay i get it it didn't move the needle for me and while i'm not necessarily upset that i didn't see half-life alex i would like to see it come to this it'd be easier to play definitely now that i've sold my are, oculus quest 2 are we at the I, point where um we just have to realize that Half-Life Alex is not coming to PlayStation VR 2. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Like it's just not I'd coming. I'd love to eventually be wrong, but I think <laughs> at this point it's better to not expect it to come and then let it be a surprise. Yeah. Than to expect it and it never happened. <clears throat> Cuz that's the thing. It was a perfect launch. It was a perfect launch game and then this is the perfect time to say it. And then it's going to be the next showcase we're going to go oh, Half-Life Alex. It's just not coming. Like it's sad. I wish it would, but it's just not. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yes, I'm with you. I, Synapse, Synapse or whatever. I'm not actually sure who the developer is here. In Dreams uh, is the publisher. I've never heard of any of this stuff, um, but I so thought it looked incredible. I have to ask because I'm very confused. Is this a game being published by someone or was this a game made in Dreams? No, no, no. Being published by someone whose name is in Dreams. Okay. Which is a little weird. Because all I saw when I watched it was dreams. That's what I saw, and I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> I thought dreams does that. dreams does support VR. Mm-hmm. PSVR one. They should have made it support PSVR two before they killed it at least. Because then nice. you at least have cool stuff for people to make it for PSVR two. But oh well. Um, okay, so now that we've kind of got that, I think we can quickly move through the next few because they're pretty quick. Marathon, you get you a point. And I'll tell you this much. I never thought you were wrong. That I think Bungie's even, it's been rumored they were coming back to Marathon. But I don't think that this, I, I stand on what I said uh, yesterday. I don't think this is what they consider their new IP. I think this is a project and, and IP, that new yeah. IP is still happening. Yeah. Um, but another trailer that gave me little information. I don't know how <laughs> I feel about it. See, I'm, I'm fine with it because it's Bungie. So the shooting is going to be good. 
Of course. It's a it's a competitive shooter. I'm in. That's all I needed. It's a it's a there you go. I think what this is is going to be the console counter strike. That's my I'll, assumption for this. So I have a question for you here that's more based on why, because you know, you were talking about, and this is clearly not the same, and I'm I don't want to approach it as if I'm saying it's the same thing, but I am curious as to your thoughts on why you view one thing differently than the other. So last week we were talking about uh, milking a franchise and how milking shouldn't have a, a positive or a negative connotation. It's mm-hmm. exactly as you say, you're all of the product is coming from the same teat of an IP and you're just using it, you're milking it to create these games. Whether or not you're doing so in a quality way that no one cares about or okay. not, doesn't matter. My question here is, you were talking about how you the worry that you have for milking IP is, why not create new IP for some of these things where you're doing? In mm-hmm. a situation like this, do you think that for you that applies here to where the question becomes for someone who shared your mindset why marathon why digging back into an old ip that you already had instead of just still making this but giving it a new ip a new name without any restraints that may come from marathon as an existing ip what are your thoughts there (laughs) i mean it's i don't i don't i don't think it's this i i don't know i mean sure you could argue that you would be right but I think, in, especially in context, we're talking about Five Horizon games versus a reimagining of a 30-year-old game. Because the thing with this one is, as far as we can tell, it's Marathon. Mar- the biggest thing about Mar- them calling it Marathon is like, oh, cool, I remember when they did that before. This isn't going to be the same type of game. So I don't think that, like, yeah, sure, this could be a new IP. But well, then I, I guess I, would well, argue, I guess where I was saying with that is that if this is not going to be the same type of game, which who knows, but if it's not going to be the same type of game, then why give it the name Marathon? Yeah, but I feel like because if it's not Marathon's if it's not the IP anyway, old. then why does it matter? No, but that's the thing. Marathon is thirty years old. This is for all intents and purposes a new IP. I I don't have maybe it's a hypocritical stance, but Marathon, a one off thirty year old game that came out on Mac versus horizon or grand theft auto online or pokemon i don't think those are in the same ballpark hey i'm not saying you're wrong i was just curious to hear your thoughts between them because as i said i don't think that they're the same thing either but i still think there's an interesting question to ask yourself at what point does Pulling from a, an old IP or an old well of IPs versus creating new ones, where does it, where is it more acceptable versus when does it become less acceptable? And seeing if you can find your own kind of, because like you know in the moment, right? You know when you see it, but I wonder if you can reasonably predict, if you can set up a scale where you can reasonably predict how you're going to feel at any given point about a certain IP and how old it is and how frequently you've seen it you know, so on, so yeah. forth. So, uh, we follow that up with destiny Two: the final shape. Clearly it was going to happen back to back like that. Clearly we don't know much about this, but, uh, I'm both disappointed, but also kind of happy that they're bringing back Kate six because it's clear fanfare. Like people love him as a character. Mm-hmm. I couldn't tell in the very short period of time. And I didn't bother looking whether or not they're bringing Nathan Fillion back. They are. Or if, yes. Okay, good. Because I must say, bringing him back is pointless if you don't bring back Nathan Fillion. <laughs> yeah, I agree. They should have uh, Peter Dinklage voice it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, th- no joke. In the final shape, since this is supposed to be the end of this whole big arc, they should have Peter Dinklage come back to voice one ghost. I agree. That would be very funny. There's no reason not to. Yeah, they got the money. They got that Sony money. They got that Sony money. I mean, I don't know if Peter Dinklage has been doing much. He could probably use the work. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's not a hit towards him. I actually think he's a really good actor. Um, all right. Concord. Okay. That's exactly how I felt about it. I don't know what to think of it because no. it's a it's a non-trailer. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing. I, I think the most interesting thing that came out of it was me going, oh, Firewalk. And then that was it. <laughs> It, it gave me that vibe of uh, Everwild and how we kind of criticize. Like, it looks cool. What the fuck is it? 
<laughs> mm-hmm. Right, exactly. <laughs> the, yeah, this is this is Sony's Everwild. And that is unfortunate because I would have liked to see a little bit more in terms of that. But we so get to I, the creme de la creme. Well, hold on. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Quick. Yeah, there is value of this. I you're, think, you're right. This is Firewalk. Yeah, it is Firewalk. But I'm not going to talk about Firewalk. I'm going to talk about Deviation. Um, oh, interesting. <laughs> do you think, given everything that's happened, that Sony signed these deals knowing that they were only going to finish two out of the three? Mm, I see where you're coming from, but I don't think so. I think Sony always hoped for the best, but they also probably thought, if nothing else, we're hedging our bet. If one of these doesn't go down right, we still have two. Well, because here's my thing, right? All three of the games sound like the same concept. So to me... Which is a little worrying. First first, first person, at least. online, Online shooter. Online shooter. Online shooter. How many can a marketplace take? Probably two. Right, so you assemble three incredible teams. One of them you bought for their tech as much as you bought for the game in Haven. So then, at that point, you're choosing: are we taking Deviations game or are we taking Firewalks game? So they you I think invest the seed money, even with mm-hmm. Firewalk, someone else is paying the bills because they were bought from a company. I don't remember the company's name. Yeah. So you almost wonder if they're just like, okay, these are the ones that were successful. Deviation, if you can figure something out with a budget team, sure, we'll put it out, but we're done investing. You know, as you look at even how Deviation built their studio, they built their studio with PlayStation branding. So it's almost to me like they knew that if this was successful, they would be bought. But they also must have known that if it wasn't, they were they were screwed and that their bet was PlayStation will buy us. And then Jason Maybe. Blundell leaves and it's over. Yeah, you might be right. I was like going back to, because you've mentioned it a lot, right, throughout the show as we've been talking about how there is a, a reasonable thought that uh, Haven's tech that they were pioneering for allowing them to work the way that they work is part of why Sony bought them. So they can extrapolate that, use that across all their teams mm-hmm. and have people behind it. Instead of trying to get their own version up and running, just get the one that they already have you know, seeded into and be like, Hey, you teach all of our people how to do the things the way that you're doing them and do that. But I also think I'll I'll say this seeing Haven's game already is cool. I do wish we would have seen real gameplay. Um, Cause even if it's not my type of game, what I'd say is this does seem like a fairly reasonable turnaround time to announce Haven uh, from the ground saying like, Hey, here's Haven. They're brand new. They don't have anything. We've signed a game for them and now they're working with us on it. I think part of why they were bought is even if they decide they don't want to use Haven for games as a service titles, like live service titles, I think they see something in the way that Jade Raymond manages. Mm -hmm. And I think that they think there's a good production flow that will work in or outside of a live service environment. So even if live service starts to kind of go in a way where they're not feeling it and it's not really working for them, Haven can easily pivot to a single player games uh, with a good production schedule and good production schedules make games cheaper. hundred percent. So yeah, if you I kind of look at how those things go, you spend less money, the less time you have to have working on it. So if you can get somebody who really knows how to do it, and can crack down and make a sizable game in a, a fairly good fraction of the time that it would take most people. There's a lot of value in that. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, I think Haven's a huge thing. Okay, Chris, the obvious last thing <laughs> that we've been kind of saving, and I'm going to start it because there's the something really light. important that needs to be said. <laughs> Why the fuck did we show the Q light? <laughs> <laughs> I genuinely mean this. From what we've heard, if rumors are true, and we never know, rumors are always at the behest of, you know, anything can change. The PS5 Slim seems like an uh, obvious. It's going to happen it, because they've always done it, and there's no reason not to. It makes production cheaper. It gets it renews people's interest who may want to buy another system because naturally that will happen, um, who already have a PS5 and want to buy the Slim. Why would you not show that here? with more of a look at what it's going to be and instead show the Q light basically because it got leaked before you could do anything about it. Um, and then give me zero details besides the fact that it looks exactly like the patent we've already seen that everybody assumed is what it was and that it has all the dual sense. Like, don't wrong. 
sounds cool in terms of like having all the dual sense buttons and features and having a huge eight inch screen when most of the com- competition does not have that. Mm-hmm. All cool. But you gave me no information outside of that. There's no talk about when it might be coming. There's no talk about what the potential price may be when the backbone is technically a competitor to your own device right now. And you just keep going down the list and it's like, what was the value of showing it if you were just like, yeah, we're just going to show you later. I felt like this was a missed step. Yeah. I this felt like, like the Gran Turismo trailer within this felt more appropriate than this felt here. I agree with that, but I hated that the Gran Turismo trailer was there and it wasn't a different trailer. I straight up laughed and said to my wife, see, I knew they'd be willing to show to show the movie trailers. <laughs> I said, suck it, Chris. <laughs> 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 but yes. Um, um, I will say I'm going to buy those headphones. I don't love the way they look, but I'll buy them. They, look, they seem good. I like the case for them. The I case is very sleek. I'll give I it that. I don't love the like weird Z design, but my completely free <clears throat> Google Pixel Buds that I got with one of my phones mm-hmm. um, before ordering it as soon as they announced it because I already needed a new phone and was going to. I love these things. <laughs> yeah. They're very comfortable. I didn't pay a dime for them. It would have cost me a hundred bucks. I didn't have to pay them. So I'm kind of just in that. Yeah, okay, then here I am. But those headphones do look cool. I'll give them that. Yeah. I'm not surprised they talked about hardware, but I'm surprised they talked about hardware with nothing to talk about. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. It is one of those things where I'm like, ah, I mean, it looks cool. I think it's a really neat thing. I just don't see why I'd want to use it because it's, it's not 3G, so I can't use it outside the house. Is and it not? No. That's the problem. Well, well, no guess one we don't know. We don't know. I'm assuming That's exactly it's not my point. 3G. Every question that might answer why I might want to actually get it was not talked about here. So why did you talk about it at all? If you weren't ready to say, even if you don't want to talk about date, even if you don't want to talk about price, at least talk about the obvious questions that people are going to have for it. So I can only stream, and it's not even stream, I can only remote play from my PS5, which means that not only are you having to have a good internet connection at your house, you're also probably going to want that connection to be hardwired. And then you have to have good Wi-Fi wherever you are that you're trying to use this device. In comes the problem where when you're in your home, I'm sure that they, they'll say it uses the Wi-Fi direct that your PlayStation has that you can see when you scan Wi-Fi and it says PS5. Your PS5 puts out a signal and it'll just ad hoc and it'll probably run that way. And great. That's cool. I'm glad it'll do that. Or I'm, I'm glad it will most likely do that. But then when you're at a hotel room, what's it going to do? What does it pull from? How well does it work? Why You're telling me I can only use it on my PS5? No access to your cloud streaming services that you have? Why can't I play these games on cloud service where you already have a good hardwired connection and I'm only having to stream in one direction? Because if you're streaming when you're at a hotel room and your PlayStation's at home on Wi-Fi, you're having to stream to your console to your router and then your router is having to go and send that across and you're creating more opportunity for latency. I just... You answered nothing. And then do I always have to have Wi-Fi? Well, then is it really that valuable? Right. Can it? Will it have a SIM card slot? Will it be like an iPad where I can at least take it to like AT&T or whoever my carrier is and be like, hey, I need to put this on my plan? Yeah, I don't know. Nobody knows. That's why there's going to be another showcase. I hope so. <laughs> there's got to be at this point. It's going to have to be like a holiday, like a Christmas of PlayStation kind of thing. Even that's too late, but still. So this happened in a few spots where they, I I noticed Sony themselves have continued to get more and more scared about putting dates on anything. Do you think that this pretty much means that we're not getting a PS5 Slim by the end of this year? Or do you think there's still a chance for that? I think there's still a chance. When's CES? I don't know. It's a good question. Because I would imagine something like that could be at CES pretty easily. September 20th. Yeah. I have no reason to think it couldn't be there. Okay. It would be cool. Maybe they'll do what they did last time. Spider-Man I don't know if you on, remember. The, on the same day. Um, no, I don't. Well, when they, when they revealed um, PS4 <laughs> Pro and PS4 Slim and VR, it was like a hardware event. They just talked yeah. about all of it. Yep. Uh, so maybe they'll do the same thing here. Maybe they'll be like, hey, here's the Slim. It'll be out this date. Here's a peek at the Pro, and it'll be out next year. Yeah. Also, here's the PSVR 2 Slim. Made by Ray-Ban. 
Be <laughs> <laughs> cur- made by Apple because Apple's bought us. Oh no, oh, God! It, one day, not happening. By the way, I don't think that that'll ever happen. That's how uh, Sony skirts around the uh, monopoly thing. They're like, "Yeah, we're not buying anything. Apple's buying Square Enix, and Apple bought Sega, and Apple bought Capcom. Oh, by the way, we're merging with Apple." <laughs> At, at one point in time, I think it will become obvious that, like, even if Apple wants to pretend that they're like a phone manufacturer, at some point, it's like you have enough interest in the gaming market that we're just going to have to call you a gaming monopoly, even if you make cell phones. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think it'll happen. All right, the actual creme de la creme, none of the jokes, none of the Q lights, pointlessness. Uh, and I'm willing to give the point. I'm I'm willing to give the Q light a try once they're willing to actually tell me what the fuck it is. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. That's basically where I'm at. But probably the the best trailer or I mean let me probably the only time in recent memory where a sequel that is like a direct sequel had a trailer and an actual gameplay trailer that made me incredibly hyped. This felt like when I first saw the trailer when they showed gameplay of Infamous 2 and I was like, how the fuck did you go from Infamous 1 to this? This uh-huh. is incredible. And this feels like... I know you feel a little differently, but this feels like... I always said that Spider-Man 1 is incredible. It's got a lot of great things going for it, but it also is living in the shadow of the existing superhero genre games because it's trying to build upon that to make sure it's at bare minimum good with their first try out of the gate. Smart choice. I understand why they did it, even though it feels a little derivative. I think they have done a shit ton across from the first game to this one and let Miles be kind of an in-between point to show that they are making their Arkham Asylum to Arkham City jump. They're making their infamous one to infamous two jump. They are making the jump of where you look at this and go, this now is impacting the superhero genre. The superhero genre didn't impact it. And I would love for that to hold true. The gameplay looked incredible, and I have to cede to you that something that they did in the trailer, which was very smart, was bring everything into the camera closer, stop worrying about the outer and being like, we are still going to look at New York, but instead of looking at it as this big entity, which it still is, we're going to give you moments where you're seeing the very small parts. We're going to bring you under the bridges. We're going to put you in the lakes. We're going to put you in the backyard of someone's house, which is not Mm -hmm. what the first game did. And they're going to find ways to expand New York as an idea of a map by being the same city, but having you interact with that city in different ways. And I do think that seeing this made me go, all right, we might not need a new map yet. It's still a worry in the back of my head for the series, you know, longevity. <clears throat> yeah. But all I know is that this trailer, like I'm a big Spider-Man guy. Like, I'm a big Spider-Man course. guy. And when he popped out in black suit, I was like, oh, I'm going to cry. I'm going to cry. And then he did all the the arms. And then when he did the fucking four people takedown, I'm just sitting there like, oh, my God. But my favorite thing about the trailer was Peter being an asshole. I was like, this is sick because it's just the little things that like well, it's obvious when you watch it and you know what's going on. But like that subtle shift and it's like, oh. You know, he's being kind of a dick. And even Miles and Genki are like, he's being kind of a dick. And I know it's because of the black suit, but they don't. And it's like, it's kind of cool to see that little bit come in. Oh, God, I'm so excited. I was really impressed with, I'm so glad they showed black suit Spider-Man gameplay. And the reason I say that is because I've told you that I couldn't see myself going back to the box of Spider-Man 1's abilities. Yeah, after, after my, playing after miles. miles because Miles is so much better. But then you look and they even improved on what Miles can do so much. The Did ability you, to point at a wall and shoot the web zip and then walk cool. across your own line was incredible. It's exactly what I'm talking about. And if you notice, it was Miles doing it. It makes me wonder if Peter even has that because Miles always had better stealth gameplay and it looks like they're leaning mm-hmm. into that. Peter's got the black suit. He's going to be the chaotic player. The and baller. I'm thinking, I'm thinking that what we're going to see and I don't think that the trailer pr- pr- proved it, but I think it's possible that there's going to be a dedicated button for you to switch between the two of them at any point in time. There will be a, the occasional time where you can't. 
<laughs> but I think for the most part in normal gameplay, you're going to be able to. I think it, yeah. if it's not where they've been separated and they're going and doing different things, you're going to be able to choose which one you're playing as. And mm-hmm. I imagine that for combos. Can you imagine the setups that you can do? <laughs> Holy crap. Oh, my God. But Miles, I, I thought Miles' gameplay looked fantastic. I think the way they, they interweave through every bit, it looked so seamless. It looked incredible. The only yeah. thing I got to say is I wasn't hyped in the trailer. I, I, no joke. When the, when the trailer started and we see the thing in the forest and this hyper buff dude that looks like a Gears of War character, I was like, mm-hmm. oh, they're they're not ending on Spider-Man? I, like, they're ending on the People Can Fly game? I was like, see, th- this is Gears <laughs> of Effect? Yeah. And then, because I see this hyper ripped dude and then I heard him be like, Craven, I was like, oh, fuck, this is Spider-Man? No way. It, and then it, you, yeah. I was like, oh, okay. It's funny because I saw that original thing and I went, no way did they fuck up Craven. <laughs> cause I knew just cause he, he does. And I think it was a clear fake out because he does the thing where he pulls out the knife and I'm like, that's fucking Craven. They made Craven some emo goo dude. And then Craven pops out and I'm like, fuck yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I was yeah. saying in um, our discord and this is just facts. If, if you've read Craven's last hunt, if this game, his arc ends that way, I will. Sh- I will be. I will cry, dude. I I'm not surprised in the sense that they clearly did it last game. They want to focus on multiple villains, but have a way to make all of them impactful and play into the bigger mm-hmm. story. They m- sort of succeeded with that in the first game with the Sinister Six. Ish. It was a little weak, and Ish. clearly there was a few standouts. I think that if they've learned some stuff and they try and peel it back just a little bit and not have six villains that you're trying to account for, um, I think there's a reasonable way for you to account for Venom, uh, Venom, Craven, and Lizard. Mm-hmm. I think though, I think that could be a great trifecta of bad guys that are, you may see some other ones that are like in the story, but you're not trying to focus on them in any real way. And I could see this playing out really well. I don't. Think I was Lizard's very surprised to. What do you, like, what do you mean? Like I think Lizards in this game the same way Kingpin is in the last game. Mm, I hope not. Because if I you think hear the way they're talking it the sounds like of the game though. That's it, that's the thing. Uh, right? I, I, the, see the I don't know though cuz starting with the black suit I feel like you have to see the moment. Maybe not. Maybe they're going to be ballsy and it's just going to be that Peter came back from his trip that he's on on in Miles. Uh, but that's Morales, not, and he already has it. But no, 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 because it starts with Craven, and then it starts six months later. I mean, yes, you're so right. So in that time, Peter gets the black suit. I mean, I would like to see it, and I'm sure they would flash back to it. But this felt like the beginning of the game. Like you press new game, and it loads up that Craven scene. Craven coming to New York. Black, uh, you know, six months later. And then you're in the gameplay, just like in in Spider Man 2018, you jump in and you're immediately catching helicopters. Like I okay. think this is how the game starts. They're gonna Uncharted to it. Halfway through the game, you have to fight Lizard again, but Drake and is way more annoyed about it. <laughs> I think you. I think you might be right. I think we go through all of that scene. We're set up, and you see Peter go. Uh, I have teeth too, and then it pulls you back. Six months in ago. between before Craven comes in and you get to play through the build up to that point and then I the game starts again. I can see that. I'm not saying I hope they do that. I think there's ways to do that well and there's also ways to abuse that. Part of that is just a joke that this game really looks like it's trying to uncharted for it's it's like hey we're gonna have set pieces, bro. We're gonna have we're gonna pay attention. We're gonna have huge set pieces mm-hmm. because the whole thing with like the jet skis and the boats and swinging under the bridges that and all awesome. I was like, dude, this is this is crazy. Dude, we yeah. haven't even mentioned the wingsuits. Wingsuits wing are suits? incredible. I'm a I'm I understand why they don't, but I am a little disappointed that we saw Peter have it. When I thought it was just Miles, I was like, great, more reasons as to why you may choose to play as one of them. Yeah. Have them have their separate abilities. And they, then when Peter pulled one out, too, I was like, fuck, okay. Yeah. Like, it's not a bad thing, but I do kind of wish that they had been like, no, that's Miles' thing. And it makes sense. That's going to be Miles' it, play though, style for the most part. I will say there's one thing I don't like about this trailer, and it might have just been me, and it might just be for the trailer. But did you notice that moment, right, when it's Miles in the warehouse and he's fighting those guys? 
what am I crazy? Or was there's a was there a point where one of the henchmen yells, watch out for him and his new powers? Because how the fuck yeah. would he know that? What is that? How does he know that? What does that even mean? I thought that was ridiculous. I'm like, you're I, you're trying a, to tell me. I have, but, I have a reason as to why I think it might be. Okay. I think it may be that they've seen black suit Spider-Man. Oh, okay. And they don't know that Miles is it's not a, the same Spider-Man because he's in a mask. That's what I took it as. Yeah. I'm not going to. No. Um, okay. That makes sense. That makes more sense. That explains it. Because I thought it was like their way of trying to tell me watching that Miles has new powers. From I'm like, why would some random fucking henchman know that Miles has a new electric ability? That's insane. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was trying to, and I, and I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I think it was clearly trying to hint at the fact that they don't know which Spider-Man that is there's which. a difference. Okay, yeah. that makes. And so they're saying, like, hey, we sense. we know that Spider-Man exists because he's existed for years in this universe. That's, that was one of the pulls of the original story, right? This is an older Peter who's been at this for years, and Spider-Man's been around for a long time. So when you hear when you see them giving the thing to Craven, and I'm not so sure if that Craven scene is even going to be in the game. I think that may have been for trailer purposes only. If Which Craven scene? The beginning one in the jungle. Oh, okay. I'm curious if that's even going to be in the game. I think that was trailer dressing to help people who may not know and to give a reason in the trailer as to why Craven has motivation just to help the rest of the trailer make sense. I'm just saying that beginning scene plays into Craven's last song. So, I mean, hey, you might be right. It. He definitely has his, uh, he definitely says that dialogue, very important line. Mm-hmm. So I'm with you. But I'm just saying, I could also see that just being like movie trailers that have things that are just for the trailer's sake, and then you never see them. Or The Last of Us trailers. But um. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, or The Last of Us 2 trailers. Uh, but yeah, no, I thought across the board it looked incredible. I just, I have, I, the biggest thing I'd say is that I never, I never, I was always hyped for Spider-Man 2 because Spider-Man 1 was great, Miles Morales was great. This took that existing crazy hype, and that feels quaint in comparison to how I feel now. Mm-hmm. Across the board, any gameplay concerns I had about Peter feeling too samey, gone. And I was hoping that would be the case, but I didn't know if they were actually going to give him the black suit early game or if that was going to be a real late game thing. Uh, and then I was also curious, can I switch between Miles often enough for it to let you have that play. And I hope that it's really at your whim when it makes sense for it to be at your whim. Yeah. And I hope it's seamless. I hope you don't have to be like, uh, I hope it's not one of those things where you have to like hold L1 to side with using Peter or R1 to side with use with miles. And you, you just play as whoever you side with. Mm. I hope it's like you're in a situation. You're like, man, I could probably be stealthy right here. So let me just, you know, hit a button and I'm going to switch out to the person who's more stealthier. Uh, you know, what? I think I'll be good to go chaos here. I, I don't think I have to worry about anything potential. My assumption watching it is that, you'll be able to play in the open world with anyone, but you'll hit a mission marker and then it's going to take you to who they want you to play. I think that that'll happen sometimes. I hope that some missions are basically built to be you, whichever player you want at any time because the the stakes don't matter. It just depends on yeah. how they structure. I just think um, the way they talk, they're trying to tell a story and I don't know that what you're saying them. works to tell a story. Yeah, you might be right. You might at be least, right. Yeah. Um, my, uh, my other hope... And this is, I, I could see it being the case and I could see it not being the case. I don't think we saw an example in the trailer. I might be wrong, but I don't remember seeing it. My hope is that they allow you to basically use Miles as an extension of your combos in the way that God of War 3 let you just switch weapons mid combo. So you could be like, blade, blade, blade of chaos, stab you with the <laughs> spear and then punch you with the, you know, with the Cerberus, you know, fist and, I hope that that's how this game is set up to where like Peter can just be fucking somebody up and then throw him up. And then you have miles suddenly come in and shock him and slam him down. And then Peter comes in and nails on top. I think that could be really cool for gameplay flow, but across the board, I'm very excited. Interesting that they chose not to date it. Yeah. Probably Sony has been bitten too many times. They don't want to put a date that's five months down the road and then realize they have to delay it when you could just wait until you know it's going to hit in a month and then say, hey, Spider-Man comes out next month. I think they're just going to show it at Keeley's thing. It's also possible, but I don't know. 
they'll show that and like maybe Twisted Metal, and then we'll be like, why didn't you show that at your own thing? I think, <laughs> I think that would be a weird question. I think that would be a weird question. If you're, but Jeff Keighley is going to want world premieres. That's his thing. If yeah. if he's trying to, and Sony's uh, there. Uh, he already said up, Sony's so. going to be there. So, yep. I don't know. Yeah. Overall, All right. I think. It well, was at the end of the day, yeah, fun. Um, Want to see more? Have higher expectations from them in the future. But it was still nice to have a showcase. It was. I, I, it was, it was nice to have uninterrupted flow of gameplay uh, or, you know, flow of trailer, trailer, trailer. Um, I hope that industry-wide as a whole, we start to move away from CGI trailers. I just don't know their value very often. Yeah. Um, and I really thought that the Xbox showcase that got hit for that was like meant that the future game developers would be like, hey, we can't show too much CGI. We got to be really careful because Xbox got a bunch of shit for everything, meaning not gameplay. But apparently the, the industry learned zero lessons. We've learned that already. We've learned our lesson. So we've learned our lessons. Some, <laughs> some consumers haven't learned their lessons either. No. That's just, it's the cycle of the game. But Chris, Brett, that I think wraps up this show and we will be back next week uh, with a more traditional episode. My, may, you may find us talking about some of these things. Uh, I think that there's clearly a community's take opportunity here, which is, what is your favorite takeaway from, you know, what's the thing that was biggest for you at, uh, at the showcase or just in general, how do you feel about the showcase? I mean, one mm-hmm. of those two things makes a lot of sense. Um, I am curious to see if most other people were overall happy with it. I don't think, but I would, it'd be interesting to be proven wrong. I don't think that there is widespread like, Oh, that wasn't good or that wasn't what I wanted or what I needed. Um, but I'd be curious to see how people react to it. So we'll hear from you guys whenever we come back next week. Uh, but until then, Chris, let's remind these great people that they can go over to patreon.com and give as little as a dollar per month to support this show. Helps keep the show afloat without having to dig into our own pockets. We are very, very thankful that we have people that do that for us uh, and enjoy the show so much. For those of you who want to come in and be part of the community's take where we do get your feedback on community topics or we look at something we've talked about for the previous episode or the the episode and we kind of just rephrase it for you to give us pushback or different perspective uh, you can go over and find us on social media that's at triangle sqrd if you want to find us on twitter if you're still over there uh, if you're on facebook and that's kind of your bag you can go and find us at triangle squared a playstation podcast uh, it's a group asked to be entered in we'll bring you in gladly but i think where you'll find chris and i most of the time is going to be the discord which we always have linked below whether you're watching on youtube or listening on podcast services there's a link down there you can jump in we have general chat for everything Uh, we have of course movie chat tv show chat we have podcast open discussion where you can talk to us about anything that we were talking about in the episode uh talk with other people about your thoughts about something we said in the episode and then there's the community's take section where you can go in and we'll post a question and you can respond to it uh but i think we're gonna get off of here we'll be back next week and see what you guys thought of it chris thanks for joining me as always hope you're still enjoying your austin trip um we've determined that chris is going to go to blue point and he's going to demand to see footage of the bloodborne 2 (laughs) <laughs> uh, yeah i just need i need to see it maybe they'll let me be an npc i've been uh, funny on that topic this is the end of the show whatever i've been genuinely thinking like should i just email them and be like hey i don't want to know anything about the games i just kind of want to see the space <laughs> like, i mean dude sh- you're there for a few weeks you could yeah. do it wait a few days and just see what happens your chances are low but i mean it would be pretty cool to well, if they gave you like a mini tour yeah <laughs> Listen, I'm in Austin. I'm a big fan. Love Shadow of the Colossus. Play it all the time. And uh, you need to change that, by the way. I know. I do. I, Maybe it'll I be mean one that. Of the games I throw on I after so. Assassin's Creed. <laughs> after Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost done with the Assassin's Creed Two Platinum. Anyway, we are in the middle of a competition, even though I'm not doing very well. <laughs> we are in the middle of a competition that I am probably just perpetually in third on. Pursuit <laughs> Force. Sorry, I'm going to get a platinum in about five minutes. So, I hope you do uh, After for your I soul. Rid myself of this bubble gut. Yeah. Okay. Well, go get rid of your bubble gut, Chris. We'll see you next week, <laughs> guys. Bye, guys. 
We hope to hear back from you. Hope you have a good week. Hope you at least enjoyed your time with the showcase and let us know what you thought about it. Uh, without further ado, of course, go follow us on all the social medias. Tell Chris, wish him a happy poop. <laughs> and for all of our patrons, we always like to shout out everybody who supports us uh, for as long as we can. And it stays a reasonable number. Thankfully, right now we can. So without further ado, we'd like to shout out Spencer, Brandon Edwards, Alex, Barry Rogers, Stingray X. It's a sin to win. Uh, S. Easton. We have Aztec King, Leechion69, The Lord Corgi, Hammondagger, Bailey Robertson, Mark Schutz, Cypher Primus, Kyle Grimm, Rude Days93, Kevin Bacon Bits, Christopher, Danny Villalobos, Jehudi MD, No Fate, Josh Ayers, Derek Porter, Donovan Williams, Matthew Green, and Sean Sandaroo. Thanks to each and every one of you. Keep this show afloat. See you guys next time.